Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, I'd like to call the Wednesday, January 22nd, 2014 City Council a meeting to order. Um, tonight, we have the, uh, the, uh, the prayer by uh, Conrad De La Torres, uh, pastor of Fusion Miami Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Vice Mayor Shelley. Could the representative please come to the microphone for the pastor? No one's here. Okay, uh, James, you're up. Would anyone like to come up and say the prayer this evening? Okay, let's uh, rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fairclaw. Here. Councilman Burgess. Here. Vice Mayor Shelley. Here. Mayor Porter. Here. Now we'll go into public comments. At, at this time, I will open the floor for public comments. Anyone would like to speak, please step to the microphone. Thank you. And um, hey. as far as that prayer goes, we're all blessed to be here. So um, amen to that. Amen. Um, I'm Barbara from This is the Dog, a local rescue group. The crowd really thinned out. I was hoping to talk to a much larger crowd, but. Um, I'm here tonight once uh, to say thank you, uh, first and foremost, to Mayor Porter, to the entire council for what um, I'm about to describe uh, to you about what we've done so far. That we took of our event. It's been a busy month for Homestead, and it's not even over yet. We had the trolley event. We had South Dade Bucks um, celebration for state champs, my alma mater. Um, yeah, we have we had um, Martin Luther King Jr. parade. I hope you guys got out to that. And we had our spay neuter event at the YMCA, along with our Zumba fundraiser, which is what the video is that the council's watching tonight. Who knew Councilman Burgess could Zumba? <laughs> So thank you, thank Councilman, you for coming. Who knew I could Zumba, too? So. I'm not sure people called that Zumba. <laughs> well, they're about to see. Maybe you guys could take a little vote. Um, <laughs> our Facebook page is This is the Dog, if you guys want to see that, that video. The reason I'm saying thank you is that we got the spay neuter uh, Miami-Dade Animal Services MAC, which is the mobile animal clinic in town for free spay neuter and vaccines for dogs and for people in our community to bring their dogs to get that done, free. There is no excuse now to get that done. And, and what's going to happen for the rest of this year, every month, that mobile animal clinic is going to be in Homestead at a location yet to be determined. But I just saw the email that that's going to happen. February, we weren't able to get it. But March, April, May, on through December, that's 30 dogs 
for the rest of the year. That's 360 dogs this year. So we want to say thank you to all of you for making that happen. Without your support, that wouldn't have happened. We've tried the last five years to get that done. And what that means to the community, if, if whoever has a dog or, or you're driving around the community seeing all the strays, even out west, the Everglades, every day, all day, we're getting emails, phone calls about the strays in the neighborhood. I have a dog. I don't know what to do with it. Um, you can't imagine, really, um, unless you're in rescue doing that, but by the end of the year and early in next year, we're hoping to see a big difference as long as we get those 30 dogs every time that Mac is here, spay neutered. So, and free vaccines. There's a lot of different strain of parvo and coronavirus going around. We just lost five of a litter of 10 puppies. So please get your dogs vaccinated. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I'll tell you what, it wouldn't happen without the tenacity of your group uh, putting pressure and, and the council was able to follow through and add a little bit of pressure and the county stepped up and we really appreciate their participation. And I know they had agreed to a minimum of one, yeah. and they're looking to do more now that the city's been able to, to um, identify a steady location for them. So all the way around, it's a win-win-win, but um, you guys are the ones responsible for it. We just played a role. There's also um, at the Redland Market in Princeton, the Miami-Dade Animal Services, along with Commissioner Bell, brought another one down in the month of January. It's already full, 30 more dogs uh, spay-neutered, so um, that's... Uh, less unwanted puppies being born, you know, born to die. So, the euthanasia rate at Miami Dade Animal Services is really high, by the way, in case anybody didn't know. Um, it used to be 50 dogs a day. They might have gotten that down a little bit based on the rescues that we're pulling, pulling now, but uh, 50 dogs a day. Think about it. Healthy Thank you. Dogs. Okay. Mayor. Yes, sir. Ms. I Burge. also wanted to mention, I, I, didn't, I don't know if Barbara did mention it or not, but the uh, Meow Mobile is going to be coming down here. On a, on a, on a, right. The, um, the Cat Network sponsors that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's free. Yeah. I think it might be, but for low income, it might be $15. So again, for cats, you know, getting them spay neutered, get that population uh, down as well. That's important. And, and also, you guys have an event coming up downtown that you're helping to, to benefit you, I believe. Um, Isn't there uh, something on Chrome Avenue with you guys? Well, there's the, I forget what it's called, you, uh, the city sponsoring Doggy Day down right. in Crumb Avenue. Um, right. I don't know if we had an official invite yet. Hmm. We were waiting for that. Oh. I don't know, invite them, John. Maybe this is it? Okay, you're invited. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's doggy contests, uh, a lot of fun. You know, if you have a dog, if you don't have a dog, this is the dog.com. Uh, we can find you one. Um, and we're also in, in April, any golfers out there, we're having a tournament uh, to benefit. Us. What we do helps the community with their, their pets, trying to keep those dogs in their home without having to surrender them or dropping them off somewhere, you know. Okay, well, That's Yvonne's, why we do what we do. Yvonne's going to be able to tell us about the, the event, so thank you very okay. much. Appreciate it. Your computer, your laptop's up here, I believe. No, no, we, we're confiscating. Yeah, okay. <laughs> some bad, bad material on it. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. All right. So, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, thank you for taking my comment. My name is Ever Kevin Bowles Moore from Everglades National Park. I manage the Artists and Residents in Everglades program. It's a program where artists are allowed one month residency in the park, and during that time, they're immersed in the resource, and through that immersion, they gain inspiration, which will be displayed in their work, be it photographs, literature, paintings. And so, with a collaboration effort with Vice Mayor Shelley, I worked with him to try to get some poetry banners like this one displayed in Lostner Park. And for the month of January, February, and March, each month we'll have new, nine new poems displayed on the lampposts in the park. And so for those who are coming to visit Everglades National Park or Biscayne National Park through the trolley on the weekends, we'll have an opportunity to stroll through the park to read these poetry banners. Now, in the month of April, these poetry banners will be displayed in Everglades National Park throughout the, throughout the park on the trail. So individuals who visit the park, visitors, tourists, will have an opportunity to see Everglades sort of through the eyes or the perception of these artists that come and create these poetry banners. And we have about a dozen artists and residents who have been poets, and they came and created these 
banners. It's their artwork. It's their words. They let us use it so we can display it for everyone else. I would like to end with a poem. It's called Existence is Light. Nowhere have I seen as radiant a light as that reflecting off tawny sawgrass where that master of illumination, great white heron, stands in the niche for lights. That was by Diana Woodcock. And thank you. Have a great thank evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Terry Weinstein. Uh, I am the 2014 Relay for Life chairperson, so I'm here just to give some updates and reminders. Uh, Relay for Life is May 10th through May 11th. Uh, it will be held at uh, Homestead Hospital. Uh, I've left on the table, uh, as soon as you walk into the uh, room, I've left some information on upcoming team and committee dates, some sponsorship packets, uh, and just some general information on the relay. Uh, we need um, teams. We can't have a relay without teams. Currently, we have about 12 signed up. We're hoping to have at least 30. Um, if you don't want to join, uh, if you don't want to make your own team, you can join an existing team. Uh, we're also looking for sponsors. Um, we've had a tremendous outpouring of support. Um, City of Homestead, I'd like to thank them. They've been tremendous with their uh, sponsorships. Um, also, the Public Information Office has been uh, great help getting the word out on Facebook about our upcoming events. Um, we'd like to thank a lot of the local uh, restaurants who have been um, so, you know, sponsoring our team meetings. Uh, Chefs on the Run is here tonight, and we'd, I'd like to thank them personally. Um, so please, if you can, before you leave, get some information. Our Facebook um, uh, address is on there, and the website information is there as well. Um, and South Dade Food and Rock Festival, which is coming up on February 1st, uh, the promoters, Florida rock stars, they've selected the Relay for Life of Homestead as their charity of choice, and they've given us 100 tickets to sell at this event. I am in possession of those tickets, and all of the uh, proceeds go right back to the Relay. So I, along with my uh, committee members, will be selling the tickets, $15 each, and um, we have a potential of uh, raising $1,500, which will go directly to the relay. Uh, so if you'd like, come out and support us. Uh, that's on February 1st at Harris Field. Uh, and I'd just like to say one thing um, to Councilman uh, Fairclaw. That was an amazing presentation to the teachers. Councilman um, Fairclaw and I served on a Teacher of the Year Committee one year, the year after she won. Um, so I've done that for a few years, and I know that it takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get to that point of being selected as Teacher of the Year. This year, um, for the second year in a row, I'm on the district's Assistant Principal of the Year uh, Task Force. And I just want to let you know that one of the finalists is from the South Dade Educational Center, Dr. Susana Maori. Uh, she, her, that school is representing the adult and vocational category. So there are five finalists for AP of the Year, and she is one of them. So we'll be going out to the school, uh, interviewing you know, the assistant principals February 5th and 6th, um, and we will be at her school February 5th if anyone wants to come out. I know they're going to be doing a lot of you know, celebration and stuff, so I invite you to go there and show support for your, um, for your local school. So, and I'll keep you posted on how uh, she does. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Weinstein. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's, this time I'm wearing the Homestead Main Street hat, Yvonne Knowles, Homestead Main Street Director. I'm putting together an event that we were just giving a little brief intro introduction to, thanks to This is a Dog. This is our second annual Fabulous Food and Fashionable Fido Contest. It's a dog contest we had last year downtown. 
And we are definitely hoping that this is a dog will be able to participate and have their booth out there because they were very successful in reaching out to the public at our last event. And that's, we're just getting this off the ground right now. This is our first introduction of the event. We are also going to be working with the Animal Hospice here in Homestead. Dr. Dell is a very wonderful person, and she helped me go through a very hard time putting my 16-year-old wine runner down. So I'm indebted to her and I would like to get more information out about what the services that she provides here in our community. The uh, event will be a food truck and participating restaurant event. We also are going to have categories and people can register their dogs under the Homestead, at the Homestead Main Street website, which is homesteadmainst.org. We have eight categories. What you're looking at here is last year's category winner under Scruffiest Mutt. Haley was a beautiful little dog. That was the category she won in. We also have Cutest Puppy, Prettiest Lady, Handsomest Fella, Waggiest Tail, Owner Lookalike, Best Costume, Scruffiest Mutt, and the Judge's Favorite. So please come out on February the 8th, downtown Homestead, Lausner Park, starting at 6 o'clock. The Chrome Avenue will be closed. The event will be in Lausner Park. And we hope to see you there. And thank you so much for the time. Thank you. <coughs> Just a time. Hi, Jessica Uhake from Chefs on the Run, Assorted Cuisine. The address is 10 East Maori Drive, <coughs> Homestead, Florida, of course. I'm here to let you know that uh, for some of you who don't know, we have new hours. We're now open by popular demand, thankfully, is Thursday nights till 8 o'clock and Friday and Saturday till 10. I know that um, some of you weren't aware of that already. And I'd also like to remind you to support your local businesses to stop by once a month, um, or at least once a week, everywhere. Uh, also, I would like to say thank you to everyone that has been supporting us for South Beach Food and Wine Festival. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm, I'm humbled by people helping, and of course we need more help, but I'm also very thankful. And I'm going to leave a few menus in the back for people to have, because we have uh, burgers and wraps and vegetarian options until 4 o'clock, and then we have awesome dinner items and our amazing specials, and we should be having the can-can pork chop that all the way people from West Palm Beach are coming down for by the end of this month, which is a deep fried pork chop. If you've never tried it, it's a heart attack waiting to happen. But people come anyways to try it. And it's very famous in Puerto Rico. And uh, it, we serve it with mofongo and rice and pigeon peas. But if you're on the healthy side, like Burgess knows, he can order awesome uh, chicken fatouches and everything. Just check us out. And on, oh, I wanted to thank Bedonia and everybody that's been doing such a great job on that City of Homestead page. Because now I see that there's a visitors thing there, and I think that that's great. Um, a lot of my tourists are loving Homestead, and they say that it's very friendly. So I'm hoping that we just keep moving in the right direction. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good, ev <clears throat> Good evening, buenas noches. My name is Nelly de Estrada, 15 Northwest 15th Street, Homestead, Florida. I am here to tell everybody that I have moved my office into the Homestead District, and I have a bilingual secretarial service. I also do income taxes. It, everything is in both languages, so if, you know, if people don't speak one language, but I also have the interpreting service, and I have other languages available, other interpreters available. And I also have a conference room, two conference rooms available whenever attorneys have to take depositions or statements or whatever. Those offices are available. They should call me at 305-245-7300. Thank you very much. Good evening, um, buenas noches, mm -hmm. <laughs> honorable mayor, vice mayor, members of the council. Uh, my name is Daniela Levine Cava. I'm a candidate for County Commission District 8, and I thank you for the opportunity to address you today. 
Uh, I'm very pleased to share that I'm running on a platform of vision, integrity, and results. Uh, while I live in Palmetto Bay, I must say, increasingly my heart is in Homestead. I've spent four of the last five weekends here. Last weekend in the Martin Luther King Parade. This coming weekend I'll be in the rodeo parade riding a horse. Uh, I do, in fact, know how to ride. Um, and I even attended a poetry reading here tonight, thanks to the Everglades uh, National Park Ranger. So I look forward to spending a lot more time with all of you and spending more time in Homestead. And you can find out more about me at votedaniela.com. So thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good luck. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Steve. members. My name is Stephen Caves. I live in the uh, Sky Vista area. And I understand that there's going to be a discussion tonight about a proposed zoning change for a piece of property on Northeast 8th Street and 15th Avenue. Just to let you know that there are several residents here that would like to speak on that tonight when that comes up. Do you want to just uh, do it by a show of hands, or do you want them to each one come up? Because we can basically, if it's the same information, just uh, let us know the, the show of hands and we'll uh, be able to take that into consideration because I've, I've heard concerns as well. So I don't know about the rest of the council members. You know, I was just going to, is it better to have them come back up during the actual item so that it's all recorded and, yeah. and do the public comment then versus now or? Okay. Okay. Yeah, just let you know that we are here to oppose it. Perfect. Okay, so that when, when, when it is public comments, we'll, you'll be definitely allowed to speak, so. Okay, thank you. Ms. Wallman, did you say? Okay. Um, one of the dollar stores, Campbell, Campbell Drive. Yes, sir. Got it. Herman Laverne Jones with Theater South and the production of I Have a Dream. And uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, uh, we had a wonderful time, and City Manager, we had a wonderful time at the breakfast uh, this past Friday. We did an excerpt from the production and we just had a rock and roll good time. Great food, great camaraderie, and thank you for having us there. Uh, we're going to be at the FICO Williams Center uh, here in Homestead on Friday at 4.30 and 8 o'clock. And we do our move in uh, tomorrow morning and it has been a wonderful, wonderful journey. And I just want to thank everyone for this opportunity to share the production of I Have a Dream gospel musical on Martin Luther King. And we are using uh, participants from this community. We brought in some professionals. Uh, we had a chance to perform at two other venues. It is looking great. Uh, we have a six-year-old and a 73-year-old on the same stage at the same time, and it is beautiful. We have over 30 uh, actors and dancers and singers, and this will just be a good time. And again, that's at 4.30 and 8 o'clock on Friday, and uh, we just want to say thank you. Please come out. We have a few more tickets left. Uh, people are calling at a rapid rate, and uh, we want all of the council to attend if they uh, have an opportunity, and you as well. We do have tickets here. The tickets are only $5 a ticket. So we made it palatable for everyone to get a ticket. And if you cannot afford a ticket, come and see me, and we'll try to make it a ticket available for you because we really want the community to view this production. Thank you very much. The Vice Mayor has a question. Yeah, quick question. I had a couple people ask me today, where, where do they get the actual tickets? Is there a phone number? Or they yes. Michael Williams, where do they I, pick them up? I can get that to you. Um, the website that you can go and get tickets from is www.ihadtour, I-H-A-D-T-O-U-R.com, or you can go to theatersouthatlanta.org, and that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-S-O-U-T-H-A-T-L 
A-N-T-A dot O-R-G. And we do have tickets available right here. Uh, Ms. Brigitta Kane, do you mind raising your hand? Yeah. Uh, she has some tickets here uh, that are available. And we will be uh, placing some tickets uh, at the FICO Williams as well tomorrow when we move in. Ms. Faircloth has a question. Yes. I was just going to ask about ticket sales. You said we have a few left. Well, that was music to my ears because for such a pricey production, at least for the city of Homestead, we wanted to make sure that there's a captive audience to be able to enjoy and witness such a, a phenomenal program, what, what I was told. H how many tickets have we sold since uh, we last spoke, since, since I last spoke with you? Roughly 250 to 300 tickets have been sold. The size of our um, staging is maybe a little bit longer than what you're sitting on now in that room mm -hmm. and it's going to come off the wall a little bit so we've got kind of a horseshoe seating mm -hmm. that'll be there and we want to make sure that, that uh, OSHA and the fire codes and all of that so that their entrance is next so we are going to have approximately 350 to 400 chairs up mm -hmm. and we'll be putting in the set tomorrow uh, and tickets have been picking up in the past few days. I mean, okay. I think the last time I talked to Pedro, I said I had maybe 50 or 60, and it's jumped to about 300. So that's really good. And the 4.30 uh, presentation is for after-school programming. We shifted the time from 10 in the morning, then from 3, and then to 4.30, so that if you know of after-school programming, uh, we will be there. So uh, we're trying to make it palatable that everyone can get a chance to see it. Okay. I just want to make sure the tickets are accessible in addition to being available online. So you mentioned the tickets will be at the FICA Williams Community Center on tomorrow? Yes, on tomorrow we'll have tickets there at 10 a.m. And also uh, I can give a telephone number. I'll give two numbers. One is 305-924. 3003 and you'll get Yannick Jones and he'll be able to get tickets to you and we also have a delivery system if you call us we'll bring the tickets to you because we want to make sure that you get them and then uh, my personal number is 919-337-5430 and uh, Brigitte and I have tickets that we can get to people and how how I'm May I continue? How long is the production? Uh, the first half is 58 minutes, and the second half is about the same with an intermission of about 20 minutes. So the whole thing is about two and a half hours. Will there be re refreshments available for purchase considering the length of time? Uh, of yes, we're going to try to provide waters and uh, uh, sodas and chips, that type of thing, yes. Okay. And you'll be able to eat in the hall as well. So we're not putting that restriction on the food part. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. My name is Dale Machesek. I'm with the South Aid Newsleader. And I'm sitting back there thinking, there's two things I'd like to get off my chest. One, I would like to thank everyone on the council for what you did for the Buccaneers. I am very proud of the boys at South Aid High School and what they did. I know we all are. But I think you're to be commended for coughing it up and getting it done and doing the right thing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to echo, I was at the MLK breakfast and got to see one of the scenes from Mr. Jones' play. All of you should go. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes. Dale, Dale, while you're up Dale. there, would you like to put on your rotary hat and go ahead and announce the upcoming rotary auction and cars and all that good stuff? Glad to. Friday, February the 7th at 7 o'clock at Harris Pavilion. If you don't have your tickets yet, see Mr. Shelley or myself, but the rotary auction, the annual rotary auction, where we attempt to raise as many dollars as possible, the Rotary Foundation, to put some great local kids into college that will take place. So please, if you don't know about the auction, talk to either of us. But that evening is a, it's fine dining, fine company, camaraderie. We raise an awful lot of money, but we always need more. 
There's some wonderful kids in this community. Those of you that live here, spend time here, know that there's, there's fabulous children that just don't have the means. And Rotary is just one organization that tries to help that. We give away anywhere from twenty to $50,000 a year to get some of our fine youngsters headed in the right direction so they can lead this community tomorrow. Thank you for that. Very good. Okay, I see no more public comments, so at this time I'll close the public comment section and we'll go to additions, deletions, or deferrals. None? Um, tab one is, uh, let me say, consent agenda. Second? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, public, co um, um, public hearings, Mr. Attorney. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Please be advised the following items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to comment upon any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on each item. Swearing in, all <coughs> testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish to either be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due aid. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the counsel to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. And further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2-591, any lobbyists must, re must register before addressing the council on any of the following items. At this time, the council members must disclose any ex parte communications concerning any of the items on this evening's quasi-judicial agenda. Mayor. Vice Mayor. Tab 11, I was contacted by some concerned residents uh, regarding that item, so I did have a discussion on hearing their concerns. Uh, residents as well. On 11? On 11, tab 11. Thank you. Uh, at this time, the clerk will swear in any persons who wish to testify on the following quasi-judicial items. Would you please stand and raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name, hereby swear or affirm that the information I present shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you. You may be seated. Tab 10, which is card number 1055, your first item for consideration, is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the request by HRES Investment 9, LLC, for site plan approval for a 9,180-square-foot retail commercial building on an approximately 1.53-acre parcel located at the southwest corner of Southwest 6th Street and Medlin Road, 187th Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. The report from staff, Mr. Manager. Yes, sir. Uh, staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the proposed resolution granting the site plan approval for the uh, commercial uh, retail family dollar store proposed at this location. The applicant intends to construct a 9,100 square foot family dollar commercial retail store uh, with uh, 31 on-site parking spaces, uh, two points of ingress and egress, and the landscaping and a large septic system and drain field uh, upon the approval of the site plan. The property is currently zoned in the uh, planned urban neighborhood district, uh, the southwest neighborhood uh, commercial sub area. Um, and the, uh, the current uh, future land use map is a uh, planned urban neighborhood. Once again, we recommend approval of this site plan. Okay. Any questions from council? Need a, need a motion. Um, I, I, I'm going to get the public comment. Okay. I'd like to, then we'll, we'll get the motion at the end. Or do you want, me to, do you want a motion to put no, it on? Whatever. I just want to. Okay. Um, one, one question, Mayor. Vice Mayor. Just on, I saw in here on the memorandum, there's a, there's a mention about the color palette. Is that being, are you asking us to make a decision on that as well? Yeah, the colors don't match uh, what we allow in the color palette, uh, but the council has uh, the right to approve that we need to take it through you. Uh, typically when we do something that's, it's, uh, that, that's part of their uh, uh, trademark or, um, or uh, commercial signage, um, for their business, uh, you all approve those things. Okay, and so this, this, the the red is a, is their commercial is the, their the red's a color that they use uh, as part of their uh, corporate. And is that in the the Florida City store they just built? Does that have the same? 
Uh, yes, it's the, all their all their colors are the same. Okay. You okay. Okay. This is a public hearing, so at this time I'll open the hearing up to the public. If anyone would like to speak against this or for this, I see none. I'll close the public hearing. Um, any final comments from council? Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. second motion to approve. Motion to approve. Denied. Yeah. To approve. Motion to approve. Now, um, Joe, you said uh, this is by right. They have the right to be there. Um, whether the council approves of the use as, as another dollar store in Homestead is really the, they, they can be there? Yes, sir. They have all their land use and zoning are all compatible, uh, so they have the right to develop. And uh, their request is within the zoning code. They're not asking for variances. They fit all within the code. So they, they absolutely have the right to do this. No okay. reason to deny them. Okay, any final comments? I have one question. Ms. Waldman. <laughs> the um, color red. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's, it says that's the trim color. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with their, with their color palette. Is, that, is it beige and then red trim or? Is it their colors? Yes. Yes, uh, well, they're, they're, they have uh, corporate colors that they have as part of their um, dollar store signage, which is a, it's a red, and that red is not one of the colors that is in our color palette. They're using that trim color on their, on their building, so uh, it needs to come through the city council. But to it's approve. just a trim color. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? There's a motion. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaws? Yes. Councilwoman Wallman? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 11? Tab 11, car number 1056, is an ordinance of this first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting the, re the request of HRES Investment 16 LLC for a rezoning of an approximately 0.99 acre portion of a parcel from professional business restricted B1A zoning district to the restricted retail commercial B1 zoning district for property located at 16435 Southwest 312th Street, Campbell Drive, as legally described in Exhibit A, approving the release of a previously recorded covenant running with the land and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. A report from staff. Yes, sir. Um, we're recommending approval of this. Uh, this, is, this is different. It's not a site plan. It's a rezoning. So what we're doing here is, is attempting to rezone the property um, from a B, a B1A to B1, which is a, a, a more liberal zoning district there. Um, the uh, applicant at the same time is uh, we're going to need to release a covenant from 1984, which uh, is attached to that uh, restrictive covenant that runs with the land. Um, which is tied to an old abandoned site plan that would need to be released as part of this development. Uh, so we are going to, uh, to rest, request approval for this development. Okay. Questions from Council? Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I had a chance to, I looked at the report, I had a chance to drive by and actually look at the, the property that they're proposing this development or actually the, the change of the zoning for. And it's really tucked into the middle of a of a neighborhood, especially an old established neighborhood. And so I don't know that a more liberal use of B1 use in that particular site makes sense to me. You know, it makes sense to have B1 on the, on the main thoroughfare. And if you look at some of the other properties north and south of there, that, that first block off of is usually some sort of commercial product. But then in that particular location, once you get behind that first line, there's very few that are, are, are commercial, especially of a heavy nature, you know, the B1 type. Uh, maybe they're old houses that have been converted into type of daycare or something like that, but not quite as intensive as, as what would be allowed under a B1 going forward in the future. So for, in my opinion, I, I, I don't support the change from a B1A to a B1 for this particular parcel because, again, if you, if you look at it, it is literally in the middle of this, of this neighborhood, and then you also have that, that restriction, I guess, that would be lifted for the parking space. So I can see why that plan was put in place that, that long ago. Anything else, sir? That, that's all for now. Any other questions from council? I, I kind of have to echo the vice mayor's comments. I don't know that it's the appropriate uh, place. So um, if there's no further discussion from council at this point, I'll open up the public hearing. Uh, please step to the microphone. Uh, good evening. My name is Joda Biddle, Shulky Biddle and Stoddard, 1717 Indian River Boulevard, Vera Beach, Florida. 
Um, I'd just like to give you a um, description of what we're trying to do. Um, I'm not sure if in your uh, packet is the old covenant. Um, basically, from uh, Camel Drive all the way back to the next street, it was all one commercial piece. The front was zoned um, B1. The middle portion, or middle third, is B1A, and the Latin north part is uh, parking. Uh, they had a full site plan. So it was going to all be commercial. Um, the covenant we're trying to release, uh, the underlying land use, half of this property to the south is commercial. The north half is residential. So releasing the covenant doesn't allow us to do commercial on the north half. That will have to be residential. And for it to be commercial, it had to change the land use. So our line, the north line of our rezoning, that whole portion is land use is commercial. And that's what we're just trying to clear up, whether it's B1A or B1, that's going to be the line of commercial. To the north of that is going to be, have to be residential, unless they change the land use. So that's the only reason we're trying to clear that up. The use we have, and we have a site plan which would come to the second reading, would be another family dollar that utilizes this entire south half. And that's the only reason we're doing this uh, rezoning, is because the retail use wouldn't be allowed in this third of the bottom half, which I think is on that survey. If, I don't know if you have that packet. And that's the only reason we're trying to do this zone. We're not trying to push commercial into a residential area. Your land use is for commercial. And Joe, I don't know if you want to tell them that or not. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to clean it up. So, if you all have any questions about it or. No, sir. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brooks Bird. I'm representing Hunt Real Estate Development. Um, just a further clarification to uh, the requested zoning change. Uh, the requested zoning change really ties back to uh, the abandoned site plan that, that uh, staff has referenced that was put in place in uh, 1984. Um, again, the frontage of this site has always been B1. Um, the entire track is, is a three-acre track. And there's a uh, kind of a delineation line, which is uh, an unimproved street that runs through the, uh, an old street, abandoned street that runs through the property on 9th Street, or 9th Avenue, 9th Street. And uh, th that is kind of the delineating factor. I agree uh, that you do not want to put uh, intense retail use into a neighborhood. Um, that delineation area, as you would see it, um, is consistent with the uh, neighboring properties and the uh, properties uh, across the street. I should point out the uh, property to the south of this is, has B1 and has actually been site planned for a large big box residential use. Uh, the site to the west of this is a retail building that was constructed um, just a couple years ago. And then you have a multifamily apartment on the east side of this property. I'm happy to answer any additional questions regarding it uh, if, if you'd like. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Michael Taylor, 1480 Northeast 10th Street. <clears throat> I happen to live in the back of this property. Um, years ago, not too long ago, um, I remember coming when the planning and zoning, we were, we were thinking, we were, the city was going to put a street right there where they're talking this abandoned street, straight through. That's the reason why they didn't want to give the nursing home that property. Now, they put a nursing home next to it and a professional building next to it, and we were still fighting this covenant, which is on the property. It's not abandoned. The covenant is running with the property that is supposed to stay. Be one. It's, it's, it's no, there's no business supposed to go there whatsoever. No business whatsoever. And it's all residential. So, I mean, talking about clearing this up and clearing this up, I mean, it's, it's nothing that to be cleared up. I mean, you know, it's, it says right here, an approved release of this, uh, I mean, um, the covenant is running with the land. And, and the covenant is running with the land. So if we find the covenant, it's not abundant. And the city promised to put a street through there, Ninth Street, if we read our minutes from the planning years ago. I'm, ter I'm terribly opposed to another um, 
Family Dollar Store there. We got one Family Dollar, we got a dollar store in Publix. We got one over Winn-Dixie. We got one down the street. We got a, a daycare right next to it. I mean, the traffic is horrendous coming out from our um, community trying to get to, to um, try to get to, 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 to Camel Drive. It's ridiculous for us to, to, to put anything more right there, more than residential. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Yes, <clears throat> I'm really black, and my house borders along with yours there, alongside the avocado grove. Now, what the original plan was when they first tried to rezone it was that they were going to put in two-story places. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, hey, they put in two stories. There's going to be people standing there looking down into my bedroom. And I go along with what George just said about the zoning of it. And basically, that's my complaint is I don't need two-story buildings that close to a regular house. Now, the reason I heard, I don't know how true it is, they were talking about putting in um, some apartments or something. Now, since they have had redone the apartments over on the other side of 15th Avenue and uh, 312th Street, we've had a fairly quiet neighborhood. Prior to that, I had three break-ins to my house. Luckily, my neighbors were alert. We were happened to be gone for a couple of hours. I don't need more apartments in our general area. I thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Stephen Case. Uh, pardon me, I'm still getting over a cold. Um, I've lived in my current house at 1531 Northeast Ninth Court for 41 years. I was born and raised in this town. So I don't have a problem with progress. I do have a problem with this type of store being put in 100 yards from my house. I walk out my front door, I can see that property. It's right there. Gentleman just before me, he lives, his property line is right on that piece of property. The other houses that face south off of Ninth Court face right into that property. Nobody wants to see that. I don't know where you people live. You don't want that in your front yard. We don't want it either. I was part of the neighbors that got this restriction put in 30 years ago simply because we didn't want this type of uh, business put in there. If we have to have anything, let's keep it restricted to a professional building, one that would be fitting in with the neighborhood, you know, a low level, single story, you know, whatever. Obviously, progress is going to come, but we can demand that it be what we want and not what some developer wants to put next to our homes. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions? For, uh, uh, is there any more public comments at this time? Uh, Senator Biddle, I was speaking earlier. Um, I'm not sure if there's confusion um, or not. We're, we're only doing a single story building, retail building. That's all this is. Um, the site plan we have submitted, which will come later, is on the east half of this rezoned property. Um, that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to rezone this to have that uh, family dollar go in, which will have half of this property as a buffer in between the residences. Um, I'm sure the, my client, if we only rezone the eastern half of this property, I mean, we can accept that. We just needed to build this family dollar. Um, obviously, if we don't get this zoning, it kills this entire project we have submitted. Uh, we're not trying to encroach in the residential area. 
like I said before, I believe the front half is the land use is commercial. Uh, the rear of this whole entire property is has land use of uh, residential. So that will be residential. So I, I don't know if you have any other questions or comments or issues or. <clears throat> I think I think we understood that that what he was talking about was really not germane to this particular uh, scenario, this particular case. So, but well, I, we understand his concern. So, if, I, I speak for the council. Everybody understood. Miss um, Wallman. Um, I, I'm I I know when I was going through my packet, it's easy to get confused with this because I'm looking at um, I don't know if this can go on the screen. It's the graft, and it shows the first portion, the second portion, and the grove. Okay. I didn't know if it could go on the screen or not, but <coughs> um, the first half, I mean, the, por the portion that's on Campbell Drive, tell me if I'm correct. That's zoned right now for B1, correct? Correct. Or B1A. Yes, ma'am. That's B1. B1. And that's directly on Campbell Drive. Yes, ma'am. And it looks to be, how big a parcel is that? About, it's about an acre. What, what's the total? They're, they're rezoning the hash. That would, if you see that white rectangle on that yeah. graphic, that's what they're trying to rezone from B1A to uh, B1, and that's about an acre. Okay. So, so what about the parcel in front of that on Campbell Drive? That's, that's, <coughs> the, that's the same size as the uh, area they're rezoning, essentially. But the, but the area, the parcel on Campbell Drive is B1. B1. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and they want to rezone to? B1. B1. They just want to conform that middle parcel is the same as the front parcel. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And the back parcel, how many acres is that avocado grove? That's probably another, uh, that's probably another two acres in total. Okay. And, and? The whole, the whole, the whole area there is about four acres they're they're, they're rezoning one um, parcel which is one acre and those two acres in the back are zoned um a b1a and parking were, the northernmost is parking and they have a residential land use on them okay but the back acreage is on residential correct uh yes ma'am residential uh, land use and are you looking to rezone that so you you're willing to keep that as an avocado grove correct Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I guess if, if you kind of consider the uh, Ninth Street, the delineation line between the north and south of the property, on the north side, which, which currently has B1A and parking as a zoning designation, um, we, we're not requesting any changes there. Um, to, to the comment, that particular piece does have a residential land use, um, but at this moment, in order to, to do residential in that area, that would require an additional rezoning, which we're not requesting. Um, but if, if, again, considering uh, Ninth Street as kind of the north-south delineation, and I, I don't know what commitments were made on Ninth Street in the past, or even if it's an abandoned street or a viable street, but I'm kind of using it as a delineation point to the property. Um, the, the zoning that was in place was really tied directly to a Pacific site plan that was proposed in 1984. But what I'm trying to find out, because I, I, I wanna make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. That avocado grove, you're telling me that would be torn down and that would be a parking lot? N no, we're not, we're not, we're not address, we don't have any plans, or I'm, I'm not related to any plans related to the avocado grove on the northern portion. Uh, really, again, the, the portion of the avocado grove that's there on the south portion from 9th Street South is really the point in discussion we're talking about tonight. And of that portion, there's about 50% of that, if, if I divide that parcel north to south in half, 50% of it that fronts along Campbell Drive, today's zoning on that is B1. And, and what we're using is 9th Street as a delineation line and, and, and the reference that Joe is making about clearing, cleaning stuff up, I don't know if that's the right adjective. Really what, what we're, basically what we're trying to do is delineate from that Ninth Street to the south and, and make that, that full parcel in, more in compliance with that Campbell Road corridor and that's why we, we 
requested the B1 zoning in that area. So your your business would face Campbell Drive. That would be yes, ma'am. It would be at Campbell Drive, and Joe, can I'm, I'm I don't know if I'm done with you or not, but no, no, I'm <laughs> I'm on standby here. <laughs> but Joe, tell me what's beside of that parcel on Campbell Drive, and tell me, I mean. Tell me what's across the street. Tell me well, what's across the, the across the street, across Campbell Drive, you have uh, a B2 use. Um, uh, to immediately to the east of it, you've got residential, and immediately to the west of it, you've got B1, and then uh, more residential, I believe, on the corner. So, uh, and and the zoning kind of re regresses backwards from Campbell Drive. The first parcel, the front front in Campbell's B1. Then you step back to the one they're trying to rezone, which is B1A, which is a lighter level of business zoning. And then you've got B1 again, and then parking with, with underlying land use. So the, the tent, intent was to have the most intensive use on Campbell and then scale it back as a buffer into, uh, into the neighborhood, uh, it buffered by parking. It seems to be the intent there. So, you've, so the B1A is the least intensive commercial use, and that's what we've got at the current time backing up to the neighborhood. What this would do is change the B1, I'm sorry, the B1A is the least commercial intensive use. This would change the B1A to a B1, which is a little bit more intense, and, and that's it's still, it's still pushing back into the neighborhood at that, at that point. And this is what's so horrible for us because we want to protect our citizens, but at the same time we don't want to be, or I'm, I can, I'm only going to speak for myself, I don't want to be unfair to you as well. Because I know when people buy property on a busy street, they want to do their commercial um, entity, whatever that is. I was surprised at the building, um, the building and zoning. Um, I mean, it passed five to zero. Correct. Was there anybody there that um, that objected to to it at the at the? I don't hearing? believe we had any objections. We had a person speak, uh, just asking questions, but but no objections. It's one one objector. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Miss Wallman and Joe, you you guys converse, and, and we'll get back to the microphone. Yeah, I was asking to. Joe. Yeah, no, <laughs> if anybody saying. if anybody saying. objected, and according to this, it it doesn't. According to what I have, I don't see any of that, and I see a five zero vote. Um, I'm still I'm 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 concerned that I don't want. I don't want this this business to be in somebody's front yard or back back door. You know, I just don't want that. The residential part, um, if it were to remain the same, what kind of residential could go in that uh, in that Grove area? We're talking uh, medium density residential is what the what it's <coughs> land used for. So uh, something like that, a little bit more intensive than uh, than uh, what than the single family but uh, kind of more appropriate as you get close to a commercial corridor, kind of a buffer from single-family neighborhood. So apartments? Yes, the MRU. Up to eight units, James just told me, up to eight up units? Up to eight units an acre, yes. And right now, do they have the right to go in there and do that? Um, they have a, uh, yeah, they can do that. They get a B1A a land use and, and, I'm sorry, B1A zoning and a medium, densel, medium density residential land use. So they could, uh, they'd have to change the zoning to residential or they can, um, or th they would be able to build that there. So as of right now, they could go in there and build up to eight units. With, I think they have is. to change their zoning to the residential zoning um, to be able to build the residential there. James, I think yeah, I, just to Just to, to chime in to help uh, uh, the council um, understand this. Um, <clears throat> the underlying future land use designation is medium density residential, which would support some type of uh, townhouse or cluster house development up to eight units. Uh, however, even if they were to come in and rezone, back in 1984 when this property came in to be rezoned, um, it was rezoned with B1, <clears throat> excuse me, B1 on the bottom, B1A in the middle, and parking in the rear and it was also tied to a site plan for a um, strip shopping center type of development uh, that encompassed all of this for this four acres and so 
whatever the, and, and so technically speaking, it's tied to the site plan, which is now expired, but the way that it was recorded, it's a covenant running with the land. And so the applicant or the developer, the property owner is tied to the site plan that doesn't conform to any of your land development regulations uh, and uh, is long since expired. Um, so in order to do really anything with this property, um, other than what was approved in 1984 on that site plan, um, some changes or modifications to that declaration of restrictive covenants would need to be made. And that can only be made uh, uh, and changes made pursuant to your authority. So tied along with this proposed rezoning is uh, a request incorporated uh, to release that declaration of restrictive covenants because it was done so in a rezoning ordinance back in 1984. A little s unusual, uh, but, but just so you get the full picture and know why that's associated with this rezoning. So if I may continue, Mayor. So you can see how difficult this is for all of us because I understand exactly what you're saying and I under for the residents, I understand that. But at the same time, you could, you could also have something worse there. So it's, you know, and that's why I'm trying to get a commitment from you as to whether or not you will leave um, a, um, a nice um, repast there with the avocados or whatever <clears throat> so that they will, it will ensure their privacy. Um, two, two points, point, point of clarification. We are only buying a portion of the property, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't maintain ownership of, of the piece that you're talking about. Okay. Um, and, and, and Joe, maybe you can verify, I, I don't know, I can't remember the exact land use in the front of the piece, but um, I did want to make sure that I clarified that the portion that we're requesting the rezoning on uh, has the land use for commercial use on it. Already. Not, not already. So we're not requesting any rezoning on the portions of the property that don't have a supportive land use. So it has different folios, Joe? The land piece has different folio numbers? Um, yeah, there are four different, looks like there, there are essentially uh, four different parcels that are zoned differently, so yes. And he's correct, the, the area south of 9th Street has the uh, light commercial use. So, so that's got a commercial land use on it. The area north of 9th Street has the <laughs> residential land use on it. That's that's the difference there. So he's, he's attempting to rezone um, appropriately in a sense because he's got a commercial land use and he's going from a, uh, just up kind of intensifying the zoning on that, but, but it's a commercial zoning. As well. And only on those two front parcels. Correct. Yes. Correct. So the picture that we have with the big avocado grove, you're not buying that anyway. They're, they're actually only buying the eastern half of the front portion. Um, the only reason we have the zoning on the entire second parcel is to um, make B1 zoning in the front for the entire piece. Um, the adjacent owner will own the west and will own the east. Uh, we could have come in with just the east side, and that was it, but we came in with the whole stretch just so the whole front would be B1. Be yes, and be consistent with the land use. The, and, you know, I know everyone's kind of against the commercial use there, but the reality is um, getting rid of this covenant that we have is a benefit. The old site plan was commercial all the way through. I mean, you can say the north end was parking, but that's a parking lot that was associated with commercial. So we're getting rid of an entire four acre commercial piece. And we're only looking to build the front, which is zoned, or land use as commercial. And we're just, we have to rezone it to get the use that we want in the uh, eastern portion for the family dollar we need. That's all we're trying to do here. So but I, I think it is a big benefit to get this covenant released and to have this zoning changed so that the front half is all B1. Uh, I mean, either way, it's, it's commercial up front. You're going to have commercial most likely. So whether it's B1A or B1, you know, but if he develops the north half, you guys actually get to control that if they come in with a site plan. So you can require buffers. You can request, that's, that's, you know. If we do it this way. If he comes in. And he's going to have to either get the land use um, changed to um, commercial, to do commercial, or he's going to have to come back in 
and change the zonings to residential to do a residential project. So the north half is really where the main issue is. The south half, we're just trying to clear it all up with a B1 zoning instead of a B1 in the first acre, B1A in the second acre. Okay. So. Well, you certainly made it more clear to me. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Vice, <laughs> Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Just, just kind of for clarification here, I guess, is that yeah, B1 in the front I have no problem with. As far as right along Campbell Drive, that makes sense to have a B1 zoning there. It's a more intensive use. You, you can do a lot more there. Yes, it's going to be commercial behind it, but there is a, a big difference in the allowable uses between B1A and B1. And so, yes, there's commercial there, and I don't think the residents are complaining about the commercial as a whole, but they're saying that if there's going to be commercial, they want the commercial to be a professional use. They want it to be doctors and lawyers and, you know, whatever the case is allowed for in a professional use. So there's a big difference between a B1 and a B1A zoning and the, and the allowable uses there. So as you can see, there's a, there's a whole line of houses that run right in there, sat, you know, adjacent to what you're looking to heavierly, in, you know, in build, you know, more heavy use there. And the other thing, too, you have, we have to look at as a council is that this isn't just about your store and what you have there now. It's about what could go there in the future. So if that big is a big block of B1, yes, maybe now you're proposing a lower use, you're working with a residents. But once you have, as a matter of right, a B1 use for that entire block, you could sell that property before we even see the site plan, or even after maybe it doesn't work out for family dollar and someone comes in and demolishes it and puts in one of those haver your uses. So from a future land planning point of view, that's what we have to look at as a council, and that's where I don't think it fits as a whole. And the other clarification is, is that right now with this restrictive covenant, they're not doing anything but parking on that northern lot, no matter who buys it, because there's a restricted covenant that runs with the land. So regardless of how it's zoned, based on what our attorney just said, there's nothing going there but parking unless we re release that re uh, restrictive covenant, which right now I'm not willing to do. Maybe in the future I might, but at this point I'm not. So I just want to make sure we're all talking the same language. Well, no. and, and the, and if you, the site plan, the covenant has the site plan in it. The parking zoning is actually the north third of the top half. It's not the whole top half. Um, the other thing is we will gladly, if, if the homeowners would um, accept it, we will gladly only rezone the eastern half of this parcel. That's all we need. Like I said before, the western half was just joined in. Um, if, you know, that, would be, that would leave an entire half of the front as still B1A in the back and B1 in the front, and it would just have the corner. Right? If, if that's you know, for all the single-family homes along the western side, if that's the issue. We would gladly do that. So just, just let you know. I, 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 just to um, Commissioner Shell, I, I think you bring up a great point from um, to more of a global picture and land planning use. And I'm not sure if it's part of your packet, but um, a, a great example of that is if you look at the zoning map overlays for Campbell Drive and the Campbell Drive corridor. And uh, you know, my recollection is you'll see B1 shown in red and B1A in pink, I believe. And if, if you kind of take a line, and, and if you went from 9th Street and went along Campbell, that Campbell Drive corridor on the north side, I think you'll see that, that this proposed use, B1, would be consistent with what you are going to see on the Campbell Drive corridor. Um, that's, that's how it's developed over the last amount of time. Um, there are some uh, exceptions within that, but I, I, that's probably the best visualization I can give you is, is that, yes, I absolutely agree with you, and as you're looking at it, you have to look at it globally and look at it, has, how's the corridor developed and how will it develop in the future and, and what would those uses be. Um, I, I believe that what we've, we've worked with staff now, I guess a little over a year on this particular project, and, uh, and have, have tried to make sure that we've been very conscientious on coming up with what is, where should that line be where you go to a higher intense use versus where it is today? And uh, I, I do think there's been a lot of discussion and thought put into that, and maybe Joe, you, you, you have an opinion on that, uh, but uh, in my opinion, if you look at that map, it'll show you that this would be consistent with what, how the corridor has developed. Anything else, Vice Mayor? <laughs> Anything? Um, I don't know. All right. I got one more comment, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind. Was one, was a, was one question about a, a lobbyist uh, attorney, Mr. Turney. Is, did, are they supposed to be registered lobbyists? What a, 
Not not the not the residents. The, the gentleman that just yes. spoke. Okay, check with. They're not. You gotta pay your money. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we could hear you, but nobody else could. <laughs> um, well. let, let me get this cleared up real, real quick. Now, Madam Clerk, you're going to go find out? Okay. I'm going to let Mr. Taylor speak. Mr. Taylor, go ahead. Yeah, I, just, I got this one thing to say. I would, you know, what I would like counsel to do, because I'm, I'm, I'm all for um, improvement. Sometime a change is going to come with a little bit of squeeze and a little bit of hurt. I've been on the planning and zoning board forever. I mean, I just couldn't be at a meeting because I had an operation, but what I would, what I would um, recommend is that, I don't know if council would admit it, I mean, I've Mr. Shelley and the neighbors, and he represent our, he represent our area, meet with the developers, see what they're gonna put there. I mean, I know Campbell Drive, me and, um, his name was Charles the Pratt. Don't tell him I do that. But uh, me and Charles the Pratt, we went through all of that rezoning and what we have to do. But let's meet with the, um, the developer, see what he got to do if he's going to put a soft, soft lane going off at Campbell Drive so it'd be accessible for the residents, whatever. See what, see what it is if it's on the south side. And you know, we might be able to come up with it too. I'm, I'm all for it. Jobs and. Um, I mean, development in, 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 my, in my backyard, but if it's going to be the old thing, I mean, I can't see it. Well, I think, I think Mr. Taylor, what Mike, I mean, what Shelley, uh, yeah. Mr. Shelley was uh, referring to the vice mayor, which is, which is really kind of my concern as well. You get a, as heavy a use as a dollar store that deep into the neighborhood, and that's what I have a, a problem with right now looking at it. it I see the heavier use, the traffic, the congestion, the repetitive yes. use on yes. Campbell. I see that. Yes. But when you get that deep into into neighborhood area, that's why the B1A was put in place because that's you right. get a softer retail use, i.e. professionals. I.e. professional doctor's so, office and all that. So I, I, I think that that's my fundamental problem in rezoning because at this particular point, we have the opportunity to say no to letting retail this type of retail go that deep into the neighborhood. I really don't want it. Any, any other time, if by, if by right, as the Vice Mayor alluded to, if by right they would just approve the other dollar store because whether or not I agree with a dollar store is irrelevant because they have the right to be there. Yes. In this case, they don't have the right, the right to, to be, be there. there unless the council agrees to let them take that heavier use of retail, higher trips, repetitive trips that deep into the neighborhood. I think that's the discussion. That's that the discussion. That's yeah. the discussion that I hear going on. And I think that's what um, you as uh, the neighborhood is saying. You're not concerned. You're not saying that something shouldn't be there. No, you're saying that something appropriate with a B1A, which is a lighter use, lighter more use, professional more use. Personal. So I think that's the argument. And if if there's rezoning, they by right, can take that heavier use. It, it could be the dollar store. It could be any kind of, it could be a 7-Eleven. It could be whatever. But that heavier use, higher trips, go deeper into the neighborhood. Now, and, Jane, you know, and, 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 and Campbell Drive is, I mean, it's Kendall Drive. I mean, you know, and adding all these trips and everything, I don't know what was the study or the traffic study, but, I mean, you know, that's neither here or there. But it's just that you try to get out of, you try to get out of there even right now. E cowards try to get out there right now just to get on Camel Drive coming from uh, 15th or 164, whatever it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's horrendous. Okay. 
The last lady that was here that opposed Miss Fruit, she's so upset, the lady have a heart attack. I we, mean, and she's she been living here for 61 years. We don't want it here. Y yes, sir. Thank you. You know, we're very happy the way that it is right now. And like yes, sir. Mr. Porter and Mr. Shelley, you said, why can't it just, well, I said, why can't it just stay as a professional type building? A lot less impact. Am I correct that this is the southeast corner? I didn't see the site plan. The building is going to be in the southeast corner, 15th Avenue? So. It's on the corner of 15th Avenue and Campbell Drive. Have you been there? You know how busy that corner is right now? It's very busy right now. And is, is the only entrance going to be on Campbell Drive? Is there going to be a wall around this store? Well, the rezoning process is all we're talking about tonight. The site plan is not, is not being discussed. It, the, the, the request would be for rezoning in order to allow a dollar store subject to the additional plans coming in. So we're not at that phase. They're asking for rezoning tonight. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. You're correct. We don't have a site plan. We okay. haven't looked at any of those zoning details yet for how they fit in, how they're going to put the, uh, the building on the property. We're just arguing about the, the uh, ability to rezone. All right. So we're not at that stage. Okay. If, if for some reason tonight the council agreed to rezone, then that set of plans would obviously come back for reviews through the same processes. And I'm thinking if somebody wants to build apartments on the northern part of that, they're going to be overlooking a retail store who wants to live like that and really between Northeast 12th Avenue where the supermarket is Diaz, and 18th Avenue on the north side that's all residential through there except for a couple of strip you know the, the apartments are right there between 15th and 16th and you've got the strip mall between 16th and 18th <coughs> on the south side there's still farmland and you've got a section of Apartments, I think they're Phoenix. You've got a small strip shopping center. You've got a storage center. There's no homes, no residential other than the apartments on the south side of the road. Why does it have to be encroaching on our neighborhood? Thank you. Uh, is there any, Ms. Wallman, please. Um, I, I thank you, Mayor. Um, so again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, um, how much of the middle section, the eastern corner, did you need? Because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this as acreage. How, how much? You well, got the first, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. The, uh, as Joe stated, the front section is one acre. The section we're trying to rezone is another acre. So that's a two-acre parcel. And we only need the eastern half of that one acre rezoned. Our, our project, and it's been approved through PNZ, it's been approved by staff um, at the next city council meeting that would come up if the rezoning was approved. I mean, we're, the, the site plan is, is done. It's been designed, you know, pending this rezoning, that would, that's what's holding it up. But we only technically need the eastern half of that one acre we're rezoning. That's so, what our project is. So on your on the side of you, there is a picture screen. Can you just can you just show us? Or, sh or sh hopefully we can see it. I don't know if we can all see it. Right, right. Of the of the lined area, correct. I can show you the site plan if you. I, I think. If it helps. Okay. If the, it is approved tonight, it would still have to. The site plan would have to come back. Yes, it, right. it would. It. <clears throat> you know, I'm just worried about because right now you could go in there on that one acre and you could put your dollar store if you had enough room. I mean, you could do that right now, right? There's well, the one acre we're discussing that's in the front, which is B1A, is not the acre. We only have a half acre that's one. Uh, that's B1A. We don't have the whole frontage. The existing owner is going to own the western half of this front acreage, which is commercial, and the whole back. We're just purchasing. The front or the southeast corner of this entire parcel, that eastern portion. That's all we're doing. When you say this entire parcel, you mean the front area and the middle area? Yeah, the four acre parcel. We're only purchasing the front 
acre, the southeast corner of that four acres, essentially. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I think uh, if you look at it as being stacked, the bottom <coughs> one acre parcel, the second one acre parcel, and then if you draw an imaginary line down the middle, yeah. are, that's what you're proposing to build on, sir, correct? The site plan so. on the eastern portion? <coughs> so why don't you just take that whole front area Southern. and just build your store? It's not, we can't do it the long way. Right, I, I need to, because this is, we're in a quasi-judicial public hearing, can you, uh, I need to, <laughs> what is this that you're showing? Can you go to the microphone, please? Here, you want, you need this to, okay, you want me, I'm going to give it to the attorney. <laughs> I'm just holding it. The, uh, that's a picture of the uh, site plan with a overlaid over an aerial. And, and I'm sorry, Mayor, but, but because this is a quasi-judicial proceeding, um, what the applicant has pro provided is a proposed picture, uh, proposed site plan of what the family dollar would look like. And I'll pass this around, but I'll also make it available for any of the public to see as well. I didn't see it. And the site plan has all the parking up front of the building. <clears throat> and the, uh, we anticipate no more than typically 30 trips a day. Okay, well, I, I, I you know, it's, it's, it's a little confusing because you've got a half and a half, and then the, the original owner is going to keep the other half, and we've got residents here who are very concerned, and... Um, you know, I, I, I'm just afraid something worse could go in there. Do you understand what I mean? I'm, I'm just very concerned that something other than a dollar store could go in there that could be, we could be even more unhappy about. But I'm going to hear what my, my counsel. Vice Mayor. Yeah, no, and I agree with, with um, I mean, those are the concerns that I have as well. But the only thing I, I look at the site plan, and the only concern I have with that is you're actually building on the land that's closest to the residences. Right. So it, it actually is a worst case scenario for our residences because the parking's in the front, which would be where the most intensive you should be, as you move back to what's now B1A and you're asking to be zoned B1, that is where you're actually putting the store and on the east side is the one that's closest to the residences. So it's actually the worst case scenario for, for that particular neighborhood in my opinion. So the site plan did not, did not help at all. Well, there was a, a question, a question was raised, are they lobbyists or not? Has that been answered? Okay, so two questions to the council, or to the attorney. They're not registered lobbyists. What are our options? That we can we can table it and let them get registered, or as he did, do you not cure it by registering with the clerk? Oh, he doesn't have the funds. So technically, yes, he's not registered now, so it can't be cured. So. Um, I think perhaps you can uh, uh, table this item uh, or you can vote it up or down uh, we... and with the opportunity for uh, if it moves forward the applicant can certainly cure it before it comes to you on second reading vice mayor uh, yeah I mean I, I don't not hearing what they have to say is, is really the only restriction for the lobbyist issue so I, mean, I don't have a problem I'll make a motion to deny the the request and the, to see where it goes is there a second to deny the request Second. I'll second. You got a second? Okay, there is a second. Any final discussion from council? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Yes, to the motion. Councilwoman Wallman? Yes, due to the site plan. Councilman Burgess? Wait. Um, yes, yes, to the motion. Yes, to the motion. Councilman Burgess? Yes, to the motion. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes, to deny. Mayor Porter? Yes. Motion um, carried to deny. Motion to, motion to deny. I forgot to close the public hearing. I, I just did. Motion was, uh, motion was for denial, first reading. Any final comments from council at this time? Okay. Tab 12. Yes, Mayor. 
That concludes your quasi-judicial items. Moving on to your legislative items. Tab 12 is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 24, street sidewalks and other public places, to establish Article 7 news racks within the rights of way, providing for regulatory intent and purpose, providing for definitions, providing for location and placement, providing for maintenance, appearance, and installation standards, providing for permit and certificate of compliance requirements, standards, timeframes, and procedures, providing for insurance and indemnification requirements, providing for enforcement, <coughs> providing for appeals, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Uh, report from staff, Mr. Yes, Manager. sir. Joe. Oh. Sir, we, uh, we recommend that the uh, mayor and council adopt the proposed ordinance establishing uh, Article uh, 7 news racks within the rights of way uh, within Chapter 24 of the streets, sidewalks, and other public places portion of our code. This uh, will provide applicable regulation standards and pro procedures necessary uh, for the permitting, location, placement, and enforcement of news racks with on public right-of-ways within the city. We, again, recommend approval. Questions from council? Vice Mayor. Mayor, Mayor yes. I had some questions. I, I, I spoke with um, one of the local newspapers today on this issue I, who hadn't had a chance to really for, thoroughly discuss it at the time to find out how it would negatively or positively affect what they do as far as putting the newspaper racks and things out there. <coughs> I know that you guys have had a chance to meet since then, but my only concern with moving this forward tonight is it seems like there hasn't been enough communication between the local media and those, you know, whether it be the Herald or the News Leader or the Monitor or some of the other local papers that we have here in town, how this ordinance specifically will affect them and what kind of financial impact it might have. Because my understanding is it could be cost prohibitive. And so I would like to make sure that we at least have that discussion. I support the concept of this ordinance 100%. Um, I support what we're trying to accomplish here. But before we move it forward, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't mind maybe giving it one more, deferring it till the next meeting to give staff a chance to sit down with all of the local news media to make sure, is there a solution that, that we can all work on or maybe not? Maybe we just have to move forward anyways. But, but I would like that discussion to take place. That, that's the only comment I raised just as a concern. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. As we all know, when I, when I brought this forward as a uh, comment and a and request four or five months ago now, I think, it wasn't to target any of our local newspapers or the Miami Herald or the Monitor or anybody that I, I think is doing a reputable job. My target and my goal is, is as we ride around town and we see the amount of these plastic boxes that are just dropped anywhere and everywhere it is my goal. So what I would ask uh, uh, Mr. Shelley and, and my other council members is we move this forward tonight. We've got another month before it comes back to us. We sit down with the, with the concerned parties and work. But uh, the longer we leave those boxes out, the more they're multiplying as you ride around, and the more deteriorated they come and more of an eyesore. So I would, I, I would ask, just because there is a time frame built into this as for the removal and stuff, I would ask that we, we move forward and in good faith, reach out to, our, to our, um, our partners here in town that we do a lot of business with and that help us and, 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 and that with our advertising and all. Because it certainly isn't to hurt anybody. It's just to aesthetically clean the city up like we did with those drop boxes that started showing up everywhere. Um, and and I, I, I see the editor of the paper here and I would ask his opinion if, if he thinks that we could move forward tonight just so that we can keep the ball rolling and have a discussion. And if it comes back next month and, 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 and things haven't been worked out satisfactorily or, or to some degree, then everybody will have another chance to vote no. But I would just like to see if we could keep the ball rolling tonight as we move forward and, uh, and, and try to clean our city streets up. And that's all I would ask. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from council? Okay, this is a public hearing, and I'll open up the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Machesic, you've been summoned to the podium. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Just let me say that we also support Let's Clean Up the Streets. If you recall, the honor boxes or whatever they're called, where people can make donations of clothing and household goods. It was a series of articles in the News Leader that led to some zoning changes that made for some of those to go away. We support the notion to clean up the sidewalks. Having said that, I had a conversation with several city staff this afternoon on the telephone. We had a very fruitful meeting about what we can and cannot do. 
we support the notion we would like to have a meeting to explain the differences between some of the plastic boxes that have become trash cans and true news outlets. Um, we heard some prices that were prohibitive. We discussed that with several of the people here. They were very open-minded to taking a look at what would work. <clears throat> they should be zoned. They should be maintained properly. They should not be in the right of way. None of our boxes are on the sidewalk, so this ordinance as it stands doesn't affect the news leader. But we would, we would welcome the opportunity to speak for all and welcome all. Well, based on um, Mr. Burgess's discussion points about if we move this forward tonight, obviously it comes back a second time. That gives you 30 days plus or minus to continue to meet with staff. Are you comfortable with the ability to to meet that time window and get all of your points? Uh, yes, we are. And I'd like to add, for those of you that haven't noticed, the few boxes that we do maintain on the streets, we recently pulled the old orange ones off the street and we put them in the shop, as it were, and had them re, re, uh, redone. And now they're wrapped with photography that shows um, Homestead's beautiful points. In fact, a manager of one of the major supermarkets in town called our office and, and requested having them put in front of his market. They're very attractive. They do not look like some of the eyesores that I know Councilman Burgess refers to. I'd welcome the opportunity to meet and talk it through. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Anyone like to speak on behalf or against? You can, you're more than welcome to. I see none. I'll close the public hearing at this time. Uh, Vice Mayor. Yeah, just I, I have no problem. I think that's fine. I don't, I don't have a problem moving it forward. This is a, a, two, a two reading item, so I think it's good to go ahead and move it forward. But one thing I'd like to do is at least for for discussion purposes and with the, with the local papers and the like and the Herald is is look at a couple items. One is the fee, you know, per box versus uh, one fee for multiple boxes, you know, see what the cost prohibitiveness of that is, as well as the type of boxes that we're requiring, just as an analysis to find out, because I know that they are costly if the current newspaper company is not, doesn't utilize the exact type of box that we have very specified in the ordinance, it requires them to go out and then buy a brand new box to put there to comply. So that's something else I want to make sure we look at. Is there a middle ground there? Is there some way to, to provide for the local media without causing it to go, you know, for them to not provide that service for our, our residents out there on the street, you know, do a cost benefit analysis and then report back. And then ultimately we as the council can make the decision on what, what's most important. So that would be all. Okay. Any, any discussion? Is there a, a motion? Is there a second? Any final comments? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Wallman? Yes. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Faircloth? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. Motion carries. Tab 13? Yes, moving on to tab 13. Uh, this is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 30 Zoning, Article 3, District Regulations, Division 23, Planned Urban Neighborhood District, Section 30-396.62, Subareas of the Southwest Neighborhood Planned Urban Neighborhood to provide for athletic fields as a special exception use within the industrial subarea, amending Article 4, Supplemental District Regulations, Division 8, Special Exceptions to provide for athletic fields as a special exception use within the industrial subarea of the planned urban neighborhood zoning district, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for conflicts, and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. Uh, staff report, Mr. Manager. Joe? Yes, sir. We uh, recommend the mayor and council approve this ordinance uh, permitting the outdoor athletic fields in the southwest neighborhood. Essentially what this does is the exact same thing we had done in, a, in the previous month in the other industrial area of the cities. This applies it to the southwest neighborhood. In that sense, all the industrial areas are covered, and, uh, and so we'll recommend approval on that. Okay. Uh, questions from council? Okay, this is a public hearing. At this time, I'll open up the public hearing. Anyone like to speak <clears throat> for or against? I see none. Close the public hearing. Any final comments from council? Is there a motion? Move it, Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Any final comments? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Vice Mayor Shelley? Yes. Mayor Porter? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next item is uh, business from the city manager. Mayor, only one uh, small thing. I was hoping the chief would be here. Uh, I guess 
Maybe he's outside. I just wanted to uh, congratulate him. Uh, word came out that his son has been selected to play in the Pro Bowl. So the Roll family is off to Hawaii as of tomorrow, and uh, it's a big honor for uh, Antrell and the family. Uh, not everybody, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, Mr. Manager? Uh, anything from the city attorney? Well, before we, before we go into the reports from the mayor and council, I'd like to um, uh, basically have the utility department talk about the improvements that are getting ready to begin on the 328 um, Lucy Street. Uh, we're getting into the four landing, and it's going to be very disruptive, but um, give you a little bit of heads up. Yes, Mayor, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. As you mentioned, um, the, the four laning of Lucy Street uh, is planned for later this year. And in order to accommodate that, the electrical poles on the north side of Lucy Street between US 1 and Southwest 162nd Avenue need to be relocated to the north. This work is planned to start next week. Um, and we will be working in that area through February and into March, relocating the poles. So there's going to be the expected um, congestion and, and traffic issues. We do have the police involved. We're working with them. Um, they'll be helping to manage traffic and we'll have all of the, uh, the proper maintenance of traffic in place. But just so that the residents are aware um, that construction will be going on there, we're going to have to bring cranes in. These are very large poles that are going to be moved to the north, so there will be some crane activity um and the the roadway will be down to one lane at, at at some points during the day the the construction is planned to be um, done basically monday through friday during the daytime if um if weekends are required uh, that might that would happen as well but at this point the contractor does not see themselves working on the weekends um, there's information that's on the website and I, I brought it with me this is what we have posted on the web I'll, I'll hand it out to all of you and it um, just talks about the schedule for the work and um, some helpful tips for safety for our residents are there any any questions concerns I just think we wanted to bring it to the awareness of the public because that's going to be a it's a pretty busy street as it as it is and it's fairly underdeveloped so it's going to be a little bit added inconvenience so if we at least forewarn everyone they've that's the best we can do so but thank you very much there are big poles and there will be some disruption for sure so yes. um, thank you for the report there you're welcome um, reports from mayor and council uh, Ms. Faircloth thank you mayor I attended an attendance boundary committee meeting last night at Laura C. Saunders Elementary School to discuss proposed changes to Campbell Drive Middle School. Apparently next year, Campbell Drive Middle School will most likely not be a middle school. It is being repurposed because it is significantly under-enrolled. And the students currently attending West Homestead Florida City Elementary and Laura C. Saunders Elementary, who would traditionally matriculate to Campbell Drive Middle School, will be rerouted to either Homestead Middle School or Rutland Middle School to increase the capacity at those two respective schools. At this time, it's very important for the community and council to weigh in on the proposed changes for Campbell Drive to give them feedback as far as what we would like to see at Campbell Drive Middle School, because as soon as you come off the turnpike, that's the first thing you see is Campbell Drive Middle School. So it's going to be very critical for us to provide our feedback to our school board member, Dr. Lawrence Feldman, 
to give him an idea of what we would like to see. They are in that phase now where they're accepting feedback from the community. So I encourage the community and council to reach out to Dr. Feldman's office and let him know what you would like to see. I've already inquired um, to Dr. Feldman's office to determine what representative from his district will serve on that committee to ultimately ratify the proposed changes because since almost all of our schools in the community will be impacted by this, I feel it's very important for us to have a resident from the city of Homestead on that committee because we would be the most vested in that process and a better position to advocate on behalf of the students within this community. So I just want to let everybody know that Homestead Middle School will most likely not be a middle school next year. And I encourage you to weigh in to Dr. Feldman. A question? What are the options right now? Do you know what the other options are, the other choices? Or? For the repurposing of that yeah, school? What it'll From be. What I heard was another potentially a magnet school. What I would personally like to see something geared towards vocational, but they're accepting recommendations. But from what I hear, it most likely will be a magnet school, but they're still in the phase where they're accepting recommendations. I would like to see something on the vocational okay. track. Thank you. Very good information. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Waldman. I was taking notes. I'm so interested in what Ms. Fairclough was saying. That's, that's a big deal, a real big deal. Um, I have a couple of different things. I'm very sorry I wasn't at the, um, didn't, did, didn't do any of the events this weekend because I had a reaction to the flu shot and some allergy testing. So with that being said, I'm sorry I heard it was great. I, I enjoyed the pictures. I think it's the first um, parade I've missed. Martin Luther King Parade and I don't know how long, but um, with that being said, I made the mistake of saying on Facebook that I was under the weather because of flu shot and um, um, I've had several people contact me and say, I'm not getting that flu shot, get your flu shot <laughs> because it's, it's, it's very important and just because I had a few aches or little sniffles or whatever, I'm sure the flu was much worse than what I had. So please get your flu shot. Don't listen to me. Um, I mean, get your flu shot. So with that being said, um, I'm going to ask my, my colleagues tonight um, for some help. I had no idea. I mean, after 12 years of working on this 42-mile Greenway, Biscayne Everglades Greenway project, that so much interest would be renewed. I mean, it was a it was really um, wonderful for me because I got a little discouraged in the last three or four years because funding for things like this have just dried up. <clears throat> and um, with Mr. Shelley's help, you know, we've been able to to renew the interest, and the trolley has certainly been a wonderful addition to to our our gateway experience. So for years and years, I've always had, well, for several years, I've I created a bicycle festival. And I did this jointly with Main Street. This year, I've decided to concentrate only on the Greenway, um, my portion anyway, to concentrate only on the Greenway ride, um, and give Main Street the other portion and let them go and do what they need to do and, and charge what they need to charge. and you know, let that be their project. <clears throat> Pedro and I had a long discussion today, and we've talked about this for months along with Dennis. And we feel that because the Greenway project is the only, prod, only bike trail, only Greenway trail that connects two national parks, we're ranked in the Department of Interior, we're ranked in Tallahassee. I mean, it's an important thing. It's the only Greenway that does that in the United States to connect two national parks. So what I'm asking you today, because I didn't foresee this happening when we did our budget, um, in order for me to do this properly, open it up, co-partner with Day County, having a little uh, bicycle festival at Bayfront Park, Homestead Bayfront Park, having the ride, the fat tire ride on the Greenway, 
I'm asking that you endorse this and next year I'll put it in the budget but but this year it's too late but I'm asking you to support me um, on a budget of up to ten thousand dollars and it would be um, hopefully a Saturday event Pedro's and I are still talking about working with um, the county on the day but it would be a huge project um, it would bring so much publicity to the trailway and it would be something that um, we would continue in the future so with that being said if you have any questions you know anything that you'd like to ask me it's just something that's very dear to me and I think it's dear to the city and it's dear to a lot of other people I do have a meeting next Tuesday which I've noticed so all my uh, colleagues are welcome to come to the meeting is at three o'clock here in the community center and I have everybody from the county from from all over and we're going to talk about what we're going to do in Tallahassee and in Washington to to further move this along um, Mr. Shelley through his contacts <coughs> was able to introduce me to a nonprofit group that brought in um, Nature Valley we should have Nature Valley snacks up here because they're giving us a grant uh, for the Greenway and they have interest I'm not going to say it's going to happen but they have interest to uh, further their involvement in the um, in the uh, the trail and they will be at this festival they will be there and it'll be a big a really big deal so with that being said I'm going to ask how do I what do I do, I do James let, let me ask, let's see if the question any questions okay. from the council at this particular point because I, I just went to the date delegation and made a presentation about our legislative agenda and uh, obviously one of our higher ranked agenda items is the, the Greenway uh, project we've been working on it for many many years and last year the they pulled a lot of the funding and shifted it to a project and the governor vetoed all the funding so I, I do recognize that the the funding has dried up so um, you know, being it is, it is a signature event, I mean, we obviously have the direction. Mr. Manager, uh, let's talk to you about where could you find the money? Con contingency fund. Okay. So you, you have the resource available. Yeah. And it is a priority for us to, and it does fall on the heels of the vice mayor's, uh, uh, you know, putting the greenway, I mean, the, uh, the bus trolley system in place. And we are getting recognized for that. And if we do, if we can, springboard off of that successful event get in front of our legislators with our greenway greenway project it it lends us a better probability of getting some funding this year so that's my opinion of it so I, any other any questions or any discussions other than mine uh, mr burgess mr shirley go ahead uh, who, I, my only question you said up to ten thousand dollars so the money would be for advertisement or yeah i, I want to make it a free event so it would uh, we would have some refreshments um we're, of course we're going to look for sponsorships pedro already has several people lined up in other words we're going to do so, something different like bike polo and and have some old bicycles there that the children can paint and we have uh, somebody who's hopefully going to donate safety helmets um, it is a fat tire bike ride so it's a little different but it, you know I'm not being conservative with $10,000 all of you who have had events know that it's costly but hopefully there are no roads have to be closed and that hopefully the county will let us use the the, the um, Homestead Bayfront Park at no charge so I'm working very conservatively with that number but it would all it would, if we don't spend it it'll go back to the city thank you vice mayor you know I think I think it is critical you know we're at a good juncture where because of this gateway designation of the city of Homestead and the trolley project and some of the other things that we have going on here it is a good time to use this as a launching pad to try to get this greenway going forward so I, I've always been a supporter of the Biscayne Everglades Greenway I think it's a fantastic project that I'd love to see get momentum and continue <laughs> to gain momentum and get funding and so I, I support that um, wholeheartedly. The only question I have is, is, do you know, is the county going to be willing to maybe come to the table with some money since the event will be held kind of in a county along the county roadway as well, or, or we'll have to work that out and see? I think they probably will feel if they will let us have the event there and sanction off, because I'm hoping it'll be a big festival in the afternoon. Um, 
and, and Pedro and I were talking about instead of doing the whole 42 miles, of course have that open with a guide if they wanted to do it, but I have a 15 mile loop and a 30 mile loop and a 42 mile loop. So we were talking about doing the shorter loop so that people could do the ride during the day and not, not just have, have it be one ride. So that throughout the day that they could be doing that. I don't know if the county is going to come forward okay. with money. That's a long shot. I'm sure they'll help us with printing and posters, okay. as Jack Cardis is always so gracious. And, and he actually, he, he, you know, I've been able to do this bike festival with no money for, for years and years. So, um, and the county has always assisted me. So I'm sure they'll do in kind. Okay. I'm sure they'll do in kind. And we have to, uh, you know, pin the date down because we're not sure. We want to do it on a Saturday. Okay. Okay. I just want to chime in and say I think if this is an, an opportune time for us to capitalize on the momentum that we have garnered as a result of the partnership that you established with the Everglades and Biscayne National Park. And in light of the fact that funding has dried up for something of this magnitude, I think it's very good for us to move forward with this and support it financially. And then moving forward, we can just carve it into the budget yeah. so that we don't have to come to the table after the fact. But I definitely support this event. Thank you. And I, and Mayor, if you don't mind, I, I, I hated having to come to you in the middle of the year and, and ask you something like this. But unfortunately, things change. And Ms. Faircloth, I'd like to call on you with the education chair to help me get the kids involved in this. And, and perhaps we could do a little subcommittee with that. And, and the same with all of you, um, Mayor, Vice Mayor. Councilman, um, and I'm sure Mr. Shelley is going to be involved because he's got a love in his heart for those Everglades. So, um, thank you. Um, so we well, need a motion, or you just need direct? You have direction? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Everyone fine? Okay, great. Thank you, and Mayor. I just have two more things. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to tell you that the SOS uh, sixth annual Hearts and Souls 5K Walk Run is Saturday, February 27th. And that's at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Um, also, the SOS um, girls, I, I, they were here earlier. They're gone now. But um, we're working on another shindig. We don't know what it's going to be yet. But uh, keep in mind that we'll be probably announcing a date at the next meeting. And, and there'll be some sort of themed party. Ms. Fairclaw was there with me last year. And she looked so cute in her outfit. She was all dressed up. So hopefully we'll make it fun for you again. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, let me mention that we have our rodeo going on this weekend, starting Friday night, uh, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon. There's the rodeo dance on Saturday night, and also the rodeo parade on Saturday morning. So I know that they have uh, stepped up the uh, cattle and the horses and all to a top provider to try to bring in even better better cowboys than they've had in the past. So I know they've gone all out this year. So if uh, possible, please go out and support them. Um, next, I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Julio Brea. He and I have gone round and round for, for many days or, or many discussions about traffic, traffic signals and the lack of attention that the county has given us. And um, they've got a new director down there. And Julio, if I don't say this correctly, please correct me, Dr. Shen has been very active down there in, in turning their reputation around from a uh, slow moving process to somebody who reacts and moves things forward. So with that, and, and Julio, if I misspeak, please correct me. We've got several things that, that we have had out there that we've asked them to take up and, and to help the uh, citizens move with traffic uh, a little bit better. Um, the first one is down at 137 and 312. Uh, they're going from Campbell to Speedway. They will be making two left-hand turn lanes instead of one in there now. Uh, so that'll help alleviate a lot of traffic that gets stuck at that. Um, out at 137 and 328, where we've had some major crashes and lost uh, more than one life, they have de determined that a signal is uh, viable to be out there. And if I remember correctly, Julio, they will that the engineering is done. And they're supposed to start construction within the next four weeks? Yeah, six to eight weeks. Yeah. Six to eight weeks, OK. So that we'll see a traffic signal out at Speedway and Canal uh, to help uh, slow people down on that highway and make that less dangerous. And, and, and you know that is our entryway to the park, too. So that'll help tourists as they're out there trying to find which way to go. 
um, over on um, 328 and 162 Farm Life. Uh, they are going to move ahead with left-hand turn arrows and with the um, uh, crosswalk uh, um, uh, lights for, for, for kids to get across there as well and for adults, whomever, we walk in that. One thing that was denied, if you remember when we built the school uh, on Mowry there, we had asked to, to, to our staff to, to look at putting a light at Mowry and Kingman. But they've come to the conclusion that, that you know there's a morning rush right there right now and there's not a need but what they have determined is down at pacific boulevard in 152. there is a light that's needed and has been uh it's gone to the engineering uh, design stage if i remember correctly correct correct that's correct. um the one thing that we're lacking and and this is where i'll be asking you guys for help uh in in the near future if you agree is is to see if we can do some sort of interlocal agreement because the funding isn't there this year to do it yet there is a need um, and especially now that they're building more houses there so as we move forward i would like to propose to our council and julio is working on some numbers i know the county hadn't given us exactly what kind of impact fees they had collected the last time i spoke to you maybe you've gotten a better correct they're saying worst case scenario would be two hundred thousand dollars to do that intersection they've looked at um information regarding to see if some of those developments had some um, requirement to pay, pay down some of the cost of the interchange. But those, those developments were platted in 2006 when there wasn't a need, so they can't go after them. So basically, they're looking at a $200,000 uh, gap that they need to fill. Right. So what, what I'd like to see is, and, and Mr. Bray has told me that we have money in the PTP funds, I believe. That is correct, yes. If we could uh, work with the, uh, or at least start the process with the county where we could get some kind of interlocal agreement where we could go ahead and build this because I think it's needed, the funds are available, and then they could build it into their next year's budget instead of us waiting eight, you know, eight, 10, 12 months mm -hmm. to go before them and try to get it built into their budget for next year uh, starting October 1. Uh, maybe we could, uh, if the council sees uh, a need for it, like I do, and, and a lot of the neighbors that have called and talked to me, that perhaps we could start working on an interlocal agreement with the county, use those funds, and look for reimbursement in the correct. Near, yeah, in the, the, near the idea future. would be that the county would build the interchange, the the traffic signal, but in order to move it forward and have it be done this fiscal year, the city will put up the money, and then next year, when the money becomes available at the county, they would reimburse us for the same amount. Because it's their responsibility, really, to do it. So I, I, I don't know if we, if if a motion's needed for that, or just direction is uh, is to start working, James. Would that be something that we would need a, a motion on to start looking at working on an interlocal agreement? Yeah. If there's people, or or could we just give direction tonight to start? It's direction. Okay. So I, I guess I would ask for everybody's opinion if if they're in agreement, and as we move that forward or try to. I know we've done it in the past with um, with other projects that the county was going to be l l slow to get done. We took over the projects because we could do it expedited, and they couldn't. So it's not like I agree with, with Vice Mayor. I mean, with uh, Mr. Burgess, that it, it definitely something that that we could do. It's not it's not uncommon. I mean, definitely. And, and we wouldn't move. And I guess we wouldn't move forward really on it until we had the okay that we were going to be reimbursed and everything was okay you know we've got to work with the county on it but i would you know if we move it forward and and, and get it there and they see that we're willing to step up to the plate i think that they would be uh you know quick to answer the uh the call for help vice mayor and then miss waldman yeah I, I conceptually i'm okay with the concept i just want to know what i'm giving direction on tonight i mean going forward and starting to talk about it that's one thing Committee, the funds are, I mean, we're going to get more details, right, before we actually... Yeah, we just don't want to be negotiating with an entity unless there's majority support for the concept, and then we'll bring back to you, obviously, all the details. Okay, so that, that's all. As long as I get the details right. and can vote on the final product, I'm right. okay with that. Go forward and see what, what the options are. That's, I'm okay. Correct. On a staff level, we would put together some sort of uh, draft uh, JPA and then bring it forward to, uh, for your approval. And also the, at the county level, they would also have to approve it by the board, board of county commissioners. So, right. So it's a process, but uh, you know, it's, it, by us moving it forward, we're going to be probably a year ahead right. uh, of, of waiting around for them to get to it, because uh, 137 and, and 328 has been about an 18 or 19 month process to get where they're going to begin the uh, 
actual installation here in the next month or so. so Ms. Wallman, you had a question. I'm sorry, John. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, nope. Bravo. Absolutely. I mean, I'm <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I just want to make sure I heard right. 162nd and North Canal turn lanes? Uh, a request was made for the installation of left turn arrows, uh, and it, uh, design was completed, and it was forwarded to TS and S for implementation within four weeks. Because let me tell you something, we almost got creamed there the other night. I mean, that, that's a dangerous mm -hmm. intersection. And one time I was on the phone with George, and George says, there's an accident, I gotta go. And he jumped out and ran to the rescue. I mean, that's a dangerous, dangerous. Yes. And I didn't know you were so involved in this. Congratulations, that's Thank great, you. Well, great it's, news. I would like to tell our, our staff, uh, Mr. Brea, has, I guess he gets tired of answering the phone and knowing what my <laughs> questions are gonna be, so. He has done, uh, uh, he and his staff have done a lot of, most and all of the legwork for me. I just sit there and keep pounding and yeah, asking the questions. But you led the horse. Yeah, and, so. and we've got one more that, that I would look for um, support from my council. Uh, Mr. Bray and myself have had meetings with the Turnpike Authority and have been beating them up for a northbound entrance ramp, which would go straight across from 152, just to the east of the Hampton, Hampton Inn where 152 was vacated back in the day when the uh, turnpike came down. They conceptually have given a, um, a, 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 a uh, drawing, I guess you would call it, and an agreement as to what their plan would be. The landowner uh, at the Hampton Inn there has agreed to move his driveway back to the east so that there would be no uh, problems with the uh, uh, entryway uh, of, the, of their driveway, slowing traffic down as, as things would merge on. Um, and, and Julio, please correct me if I'm wrong. This has gone out to a public comment, which lasts about 60 to 90 days. Uh, if, if there's no, uh, no um, great public comment against, then I guess it moves forward to look for funding, correct? That is correct. And, and, and this could be, a, a, again, uh, Mayor Porter, you've worked with the uh, Turnpike Authority for many years and know how slow they, they work. So what I would like to ask uh, uh, my council members tonight and, and staff to help us is to put a letter of support and a letter of urgency to them, I guess, as we try to move forward and, 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 and tell them the need for this is there. We're way behind down here. Please pay us some attention and help us get this done. I, I can't see the expense being real big. They own the land. Uh, the land has a, a, a base road on it. I mean, obviously, they've got different standards that they go to than I would just put a driveway out there and open it up tomorrow. Uh, but I don't see a great big expense to them. And, and I think that we, if we ask our lobbyists, if we ask uh, uh, and we send our letters to our state senator and our state representative who represent us to help us push this, and we get together and form a letter and send it to the Turnpike Authority, I think that'll do... Uh, uh, make great strides for us as we also try to get this project done because that will alleviate a lot of headaches in the morning uh, for all of traffic uh, that, well, that comes that way. Um, and, and for those, I've got it. I doubt you could pick this up on camera, but if anybody, the, the, the folks that have a handout, it's the bottom right hand intersection is the one we're talking about. It will go straight across. It'll still have two left hand turn lanes to the left, one straight ahead and then one for the right. So that in interchange will get changed a little bit there also. Uh, so with that, I will leave my traffic engineering alone for the evening, but uh, I, I guess Mr. Mr. Manager, could we, um, uh, I guess I would look for somebody from staff to help me write the, the proper terminology or whatever sure. we would need. Julio will work with you to write the letter and okay. be happy to... Uh and as long as there's the support for that concept, well, we're ready to roll. One thing from the vice mayor. Yeah, I just want to ask some questions from Julio, because I was at the meeting where they had the public comments in the workshop on this particular product. I think this is great. I agree 100%. We need to push this forward. And anything we can do at the council level, letter of support, whatever it is, to, to try to make or help them build this in an expedited manner would be fantastic. The only thing that I would want to make sure is that if I remember when it was proposed, this turn bike was part of that toll lane, adding the extra toll lane express toll lane or whatever they called it and this was part of that project so i just want to make sure that we're expressing favoritism for the building of our on on ramp only not the other part and not the whole project as a whole because right. there that is yet to be determined and flushed out where the council will, you know what position we're taking on that particular thing as a whole and the other thing i remember from that workshop is that it was 
it was pretty far down the line. They weren't even going to build that toll lane or the turnpike for it was like 2040 or something crazy number like that. So I think it's imperative that we really deliver the message. So I thank you for, for working on this and trying to, to move this forward. So as long as it's limited to our on-ramp and not the project as a whole, then I, I support it 100%. Great. And, and when Mr. Bray and myself sat down with them the first time, I didn't think that we even had a chance of getting this done and then all of a sudden Julio I asked him one day and he goes oh yeah they sent me a design so they are paying attention but and I think th uh, if we can push them along and move them along I think it'll do a lot to show that we support it and and uh, if we can get the, the uh, residents to call or, or, or start a petition or whatever they think that they need to do on their staff and, and we forward all this to them I think that the uh, they're paying attention, and I think this would just put them over the edge to, to realize it's time. Can so, I, thank you. Can I just ask a technical question? Um, my understanding that we might need county support, financial county support for the Eighth Street improvement. Would the turn would the turnpike pick up the improvements back to and and paying for the closure of the um, uh, hotel entrance, or would that be something we need to approach the county with? That's I the only portion that the turnpike does not have jurisdiction over. Okay. Uh, but the ramp itself is all in, in uh, turnpike uh, already owned land, so they have jurisdiction over that. But yes, regarding the, the improvements on oh. Campbell itself, mm -hmm. uh, the turnpike authority would take care of those improvements, but the actual relocation of the ramp, I mean of the entrance to the hotel, that's something that they would have to be negotiated with the owner of the property there. Okay. Okay. And that's something between the turnpike and them. Yes. Perfect, perfect. Now, I, I'm, Mr. Manor, you, you don't need any further direction. No, I mean, that's, as long as there's a majority of you that support that concept, we'll is, is anyone opposed to the to supporting it? Okay, you got it. Great. Thank you, uh, Mayor. One last thing. Um, I don't know if anybody else has received phone calls. I've received phone calls, and and this isn't to say uh, anybody's doing anything wrong, but it seems like we've got a Hatfield McCoy's going on here in town and and our um, code enforcement's been put in the middle and uh, I wouldn't say selective um, I, I don't want to be unfair and say that they're that, that they're that they're picking on one business and not looking at others but it seems to be that way and and uh, some of the things that have been requested or demanded and, 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 and done at the one business continue to go on all over town um, you know, they've had, he's had to take flags down. Well, if you drive down Campbell Drive, there's nine out of ten businesses with some sort of flag out. He's had to take a, a golf cart and put it inside or, or do away with it. Yet, if you go down Highway 1, there's three or four businesses that use old cargo trucks that leave them out there that haven't moved in years. Uh, so I just think that we, as a council, need to sit down and I know about two years ago this was given out and 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 it's been sitting around for two years but I think we need to go back as we try to move our city forward and and one of the things that I've been doing and slowly bringing forward is is to try to clean the city up and I can't see a place that's done that if anybody wants to go drive that has seen a fantastic job done is up on old Cutler Road uh, where they've redone it they've redone the entire landscape up there they uh, they worked with all the businesses and gave them years of how to get rid of their signs and do it properly so there wasn't a big expense to them. Mr. Cordino worked on that up in Cutler Bay um, and has an idea. But I think as we move forward, because I hear it from people that travel here, uh, whether it's to bring a business or people that are here visiting, Campbell Drive is not pleasing to the eye. And it's not just Campbell Drive. It's a lot of different roads here in town. And I think we need to make Homestead go that next step so that we can continue to build because we've got great things planned for down here. And I think that the, that code enforcement is put in a tough spot. And I've said it many times that it's there, there are no win. If they go out and give somebody a citation for something, they get yelled at. If they don't do it, we yell at, We don't yell at them, but we, we, we uh, look at them like, why aren't you doing it? So I don't know how to do it. I mean, uh, for, for a couple months there, uh, prior, to, prior to the election, we would have code enforcement come about every third month and give them a list of three or four things that, um, that we would like to see them focus on during that time, because we didn't want to overburden them. Uh, and, 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 and with the election and, and everything that was going on, that had stopped. So I don't know if that's something that you 
would see to fit to, to, to move forward with. But I also think we need to have some sort of a, um, a fair uh, way for them to go out because when they, and, and I'm not saying they're targeting a business, but I'm saying that this gentleman has had many c citations put against him and he showed me a, he showed me a picture today where he's not allowed to have banners yet, we tie banners up. The city or the YMCA ties banners up on their property over there on the corner of Highway 1. So we, the city, puts banners up, yet we're not allowed to have banners in the city. So I think that there's a lot of questions that need to be worked through. And we've always had a uh, tendency to be very lenient. And I understand that they have to respond to concerns when somebody calls them. But I also think that we can't allow them to be drug into uh, personal battles. And I think that's what's happened to an extent here. And uh, so I, I, I don't know how to fix it. Mr. Cordino, you see, uh, uh, I, you have ideas. There's flags around town uh, that are illegal. There's um, uh, trucks that are parked that aren't legal. There's signs that are up that aren't legal. There's paints on, on, on side of buildings that are illegally painted, so I don't know where to start, but I don't think we can look at one business and make them conform to everything, yet you drive down Chrome Avenue and see certain things, you drive down Campbell Drive and see certain things. So I, I'm looking for some answers, I guess, and sure. some guidance on where to go. Well, a couple of things. First of all, I think because this board has had, <coughs> this council has had conversation about this in the past, we basically take direction based on the pulse at the time. So at the time that there was discussion, there was many discussions on this, the philosophy was more, it's a tough economic cycle <coughs> and we want to try to be as lenient as possible. And so the direction was for some of these violations for the code enforcement people to be as lenient as possible and really not prioritize those items that in better times and in other places, uh, code enforcement focuses on. So for example, in some places, you will never see somebody sitting on, 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 a, on a swale holding a, a sign and sitting in a, in a stool or a Statue of Liberty wave, waving or a, um, a pinwheel or a windsock. And the reason you don't see that is because as soon as the city sees that, they cite them and they go away because the community leaders there have decided that that's not a look that they want to see on their corridor. And that's an aesthetic decision that a community makes. Some communities, and this happened all over the country as the economy started dropping, said, you know, we're concerned about that look, but also we're concerned right now about our businesses surviving. So from now, for a while, let's just look the other way. And since code has plenty of other things to do, don't you know, go out of your way to deal with some of these issues. So that was kind of what the direction was from this council a couple of years ago, and that's pretty much what we've been following, with some exceptions. And that is that if somebody calls and complains, code responds to that complaint and they have to deal with it. It's not, it's not really, um, it's not a great thing for a city to say, well, yes, you put, you, you've spotted something, but we're, we're not going to follow the law. So in some cases, if somebody complains, we respond and we cite, and then sometimes that creates a problem as well because then the person says, why did I get cited and nobody else did? And sometimes the answer is simple as because nobody else complained about the other guy. They just complained about you. Is that fair? Is that best? Look, uniformity is always the best thing. So it's, it's if you don't care about the wind socks and the Statue of Liberties and the people sitting on the, on the side of the swale, then you probably should take those laws off your books. I hear all the time people saying business friendly, business friendly. Well, when these laws went into effect in most places in the country, it's not because the elected official said, boy, we want to chase all our businesses out. They, they made a decision that we think we can have viable businesses in our community, but still have everybody adhere to a certain aesthetic standard. And so that's kind of how these things evolved over time in most communities, because there's a certain, uh, certain look and feel people wanted in their community. So you've got several options here, one of which is you can look at the, the laws that you current have, currently have on the books and say, geez, these are certain things that I don't 
really care about anymore and I don't want to see. Best example of that is a couple of years ago, this council raised a concern about neon signs. As code started citing uh, stores that had neon signs, because the, the, the code said you can't have neon signs. And then there was some uh, uh, desire by the elected body to legalize neon signs. Right? So you can do a lot of these uh, restrictions that way if you want, which is take them off the books. Or you can say the economy has gotten a little better and we don't want to see this stuff on the side of the road anymore. So while we've been lenient in the past, now we would like to step it up a little bit, in which case code would be more than happy to start stepping it up. Or you can have a bunch of discussions and you can kind of inventory the things that you're concerned about. So there's a whole lot of ways we can uh, deal with this thing. Recognize that, like all your employees, we're really here to carry out your policy directive. So the kind of service and the look and the feel of the city, we're implementers of that. You need to set direction in terms of what exactly it is that you're looking for, because I can guarantee you, somebody has had a if somebody's had 80% of their front window covered for the last three, four years, and nobody's touched them, nobody's complained, and they're just going along just fine, next thing you know, we go in there and say, you have to take all this, this stuff down. Well, what happens then is that they're going to call you and say, what is going on? Why are you so business unfriendly? One other thing, which is a, more of a personal story, is that my sister in New Jersey has a little... Uh, Greek restaurant. It's a little souvlaki joint, gyros and souvlakis, and she's in a shopping center in a small little town, and business was slow, so she went ahead and she had a little sign made up, and she put it right in the, sale, in the swale with an arrow pointing to her store. It said, best gyros. And boy, she put that sign up there. It was the only sign on the block. In fact, it was the only sign in the town, and people started coming for the gyros, and her business started increasing. And within about four or five days, she got a little envelope in the mail, and they said, what are you, crazy? Take that sign down immediately. And so what happened then was she called me and said, what are these people, crazy? Don't they care about the businesses in this town? And so everybody's got a different perspective on this. And my point to her was, well, if they let you keep that little sign up there, don't you think all these other stores are going to want to have their own little sign with their own little arrow? And then what will the corridor look like? But that's a decision that you all make in terms of what do you want the place to look like? And we really will need some direction of either follow and enforce the laws that we have on the books, or let's start thinning some of these laws out if you don't particularly like them. Mayor. Yes, sir. Go ahead. My father always told me when he was alive, if you're going to complain, you've got to have a solution. <laughs> So what I would like to propose, and, 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 and I tried uh, several years ago, I worked on part of the code, and we got it done rather quickly. I would like to see if I could reach out with your permission again tonight with Mr. Cordino, perhaps get two or three citizens, and we sit down and work for 30, 60 days with Mr. Cordino and his staff, and we go through things, and, I'm, and the citizens would be business owners or whatever, so that we are, are business friendly and see if we can work through this to try to do, to accomplish one way or the other. Either take it off of the books so that people aren't, aren't being cited and others aren't, are being cited, or leave it on the books and we've determined that we believe that this needs to be enforced. Uh, so uh, my, my request would be that see if I could work with Mr. Cordino and his staff, uh, or, if some, or if Mr. Shelley wants it, whomever. Uh, no, he, he, just, he just wants to talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't but want I, that job. I, I would like to try to, I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, I agree. As we agree. try to clean up our city also. So, uh, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's fine by me. The, the only thing was, is I know that the reason we became lenient, if I remember right, is that we were in the process, or supposed to be in the process of actually changing the sign code. So we said, not that we didn't want to enforce the code, because I never agreed to that. Ex, ex, it was that we were not going to enforce it while we were in the process of changing it, so that at the end, when we had a change sign code, we could then determine what was and was not conforming or legal or not legal. So unfortunately, nothing has been done on that. So the only thing I would say is that if we're going to look at the code, though, it doesn't need, I don't want it to be a pick and choose over the hot topic issues. I think we need to do it all. So I think if, you, if we want to do that, I think we should start like we were before, and that is go section by section in the sign code 
and, and reevaluate that because it may have been too restrictive. And that I support 100%, but I don't want to get to a point where we handpick, you know, a, a business owner says, well, you know what, I've been cited for this, so let's, let's get rid of that, and then we don't do anything again, like the neon signs. I want this to be a, a fair, balanced, across the board review, and I support that 100%. Uh, Ms. Wallman. I think it's long overdue. I'm sorry. No, I, I just, I, I, he's on know. the other end of the world <laughs> down here. She's over there by herself tonight. Well, look. Um, you know, I mean, it's long overdue. It's something we've been needing to do. But I would, I would recommend to Mr. Burgess, if he's, if he's undertaking this, that I remember we had, a, um, we had a long workshop, and I happened to run that meeting. And we, uh, Crystal's here, uh, I mean, we went over, it took hours. You know, we went over every single thing. So you might want to use that as a stepping stone to, to bypass a lot of the other stuff, because we talked about the signage in the window, the neon signs. We, I mean, we talked about all of that. And let me tell you, it needs to be done. And I agree with you. If you're going to do one, you've got to do it all. You can't, you know, you can't pick and choose. So but I just wanted to, to say that, that 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 is somewhere. I'm sure Elizabeth can pull it up. You know, it was we had that meeting yeah, and workshop. it was a long workshop, probably a video, or, but it was um, long. Well, I, Thank you. I, I agree that someone needs to take it up, and, and I compliment you for stepping up to the plate because uh, the analysis that the manager makes is, is, is fairly consistent with some of the problems that you see that we're facing. The, the code was designed back in the day when it was really good. Things were, things were great, and so we may have um, tilted too far one way or the other, but I do think it's time for an analysis and, and, a, and a step back and take another look. So. If you're willing to do it, um, God love you. I, I, I brought it up, so I feel like you know I need to uh, not just complain about it, but try to do something about it. So with your permission, I will uh, work Absolutely. with our staff and, Absolutely, and try sir. to bring something back. Absolutely. I would appreciate it. I know the rest of the council would as well. Oh, well, you, may, you say that today, but when we bring things and people start calling, you may not. That's all right. <laughs> You'll bring it back. You'll bring it back in a nice bow box. <laughs> Anything else? I th did Patricia have any? Do you have any comments? Okay. No, that's all for me. Thank you, okay. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Shelley, Vice Mayor Shelley. Thank you, Mayor. Just uh, two items. One is uh, January 4th, that Saturday, we had the kickoff of the National Parks Trolley. It was a great turnout. The weather wasn't great, but, but the turnout itself was very good. And, but I really want to thank publicly staff for all of their hard work and all their efforts. It was a fantastic event. You guys really did a good job to, to pull it together. The, everyone that attended was very satisfied. And so I want to publicly thank you for all your hard work and effort for making that a successful kickoff event. Uh, and every week, weekend, we've had great ridership numbers. I mean, it, it continues to be steady and, and increasing. So hopefully that continues going forward as we get a little bit better weather. It was too rainy the first couple of weekends and then too cold the last weekend. So we'll find some good weather and hopefully um, it'll continue to increase. The second item is I had a meeting last Friday with uh, FDOT. I don't know if some of you guys have gotten emails regarding the palm trees on Chrome Avenue and the truck bypass and, and things of that nature. What is actually going on? And so I, I wanted to find the answer out myself. I did speak with FDOT and kind of clarify some things. I'll sum it up real quickly, and that is there are essentially three projects. One, you have the ongoing project, which is the ADA compliance, the curb and gutter, and the resurfacing. That's ongoing right now. It will have no effect on the size, shape, or, or the trees at all on Chrome Avenue. The second project is a long-term project. And that one will actually, or includes four laning Chrome Avenue from Avocado to Northwest 1st, 4th Street, and putting a meeting in the middle of, of Chrome Avenue, as well as removing all of those palm trees. And so that is currently planned to go forward somewhere between 2025 and 2040. The third project is this truck bypass. That'll have improvements to the Chrome Avenue Campbell Drive corridor, as well as widening Campbell Drive itself. The truck bypass and the four laning become connected because in order for the truck bypass to take place, the four laning on Chrome Avenue has to take place simultaneously. So now if the truck bypass in its current form goes forward on Campbell Drive, then the four laning and the removal of the trees on Chrome Avenue will have to take place by about 2018. So it moves it up almost 20 years potentially or more to have that effect. So that's where those two become joined and where the issue starts to become um, controversial. You know, both for the northwest, because going from a two-lane road to a four-lane road with a median in the middle completely changes the feel of that neighborhood and that area, and add to the fact that you're removing some trees. So what I'd like to do with, with the permission of the mayor and the council is I've requested that FDOT attend our next committee of the whole meeting, 
and actually personally brief all of us so that we can have that discussion and everyone could be up to speed and, and have the same information that I now have. Um, and then that way we can kind of give some direction on are we okay with the, the concepts, both the truck bypass in its current form and this four laning concept, this long-term project, so that we can express our opinions as a city early on and make sure that FDOT does what's best for our community as a whole. So with that, that's okay with everybody. Please, I, I, we, we have to have it. Okay, and then that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, first, I would ask for the ability for the uh, council to let me go represent the city and the council at the MPO um, as, as far as sitting in front of the city and uh, county commission and talking about traffic issues as you just brought forward, uh, both of you. So if, if it would it. be all right, I would appreciate it. I'll move it. And we have to send a resolution. So it is, it is uh, moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. I'll work hard for you. Um, next, we, I, I spoke earlier to the fact that uh, we had, I had taken the legislative packet up to the Dade delegation, and, and one of the issues that we talked about was the ad valorem taxes on the, on the track and, um, and the Greenway projects and, and increasing some of the uh, funding opportunities. And uh, Jose uh, Felix Diaz basically said, have we thought about uh, bed tax? And I don't think we have in a long time. So um, what I think we need to do as a council is, is, is obviously make a concerted effort through our staff to go back to the well because we're, we end up being a donor community. We're, we, we, you know, we have NASCAR weekend. That's not just a weekend. It's probably a week before, a week after. We fill up everybody's hotel. They get the bed tax. We never get any resource sent down to us. It all goes to Miami Beach. So I think that we should, as, as, as a council, go, with, go to that well because not only are we paying the, the taxes on the facility right now, which I know there's, a, there's an agenda uh, to try to get that um, uh, remedied uh, to make us equal to other governments, but at the same time, we, we have other needs that we should be asking for, and, and we're entitled to that revenue that, that we're generating. So uh, no, no formal anything, but in the back of all of your minds as we, as we, go, as we go forward, um, let's all think about bed tax and, and, and manager, if you and your staff have any ideas as how to approach it. One of the ways that, that um, I would like to do as, as, as the mayor, your mayor, is we're, we had a, a meeting with uh, five mayors, myself included as one of the five, to, to really start rallying for South Dade. Mayor Wallace, uh, Mayor McDougall, uh, Mayor Lerner, and Mayor Stanzik, because we always get left out. We're far, we're far removed, and it's easy for them to forget about us, i.e., that's why all the bed tax goes to Miami Beach. So as, as we move forward, that's going to be on our agenda as mayors for our South Dade community. And if you guys would put it on your agendas as council, council people for, council members for Homestead, I think we should go get a bite at that apple. I think we're entitled to it. I think we take our efforts to Beacon Council because if you look on your tax bill, you pay a beacon fee. I don't know when's the last time they came down and rolled out a red carpet for us in any, in any way. So I think we should, you know, stop being complacent to the, and, and let them just take our money and go invest it someplace else when we're doing our fair share. We're doing our fair share. So um, that being said, I think it was, it was an eye opener. The delegation is, uh, I think we've got some opportunities this year with the Dade delegation. Bob Levy and his staff do, do a fabulous job. So um, my request to you guys would be put your, put your thinking caps on and let's, uh, let's take a swing at it because we're entitled. So um, I really don't have any other business. Thank you for appointing me to the MPO. I appreciate it. Uh, we, do have a, we do have a significant challenge with, uh, as the vice mayor um, alluded to, uh, there is a possibility that the county may take a negative approach to even letting it come to us. And that's why I think it's important for us to coalesce around a concept that I don't like what is being proposed, and we need to push back as much as possible, but not lose the projects completely. Because at the end of the day, they're four lane in Chrome right to Fourth Street, and four lanes are not going to be really effectively working going through a two lane road with cobblestone traffic calming and pedestrian. So uh, we need to come to some sort of compromise, and, and um, um, but. Definitely, Vice Mayor, I think that's hugely important for us to get on, get on the same page 
as to as to how this is going to affect us because I know the community some people are only concerned about the trees and some people are more concerned about the the the, the median so um, I look forward to that conversation and then when when it comes time after we coalesce around a concept then we'll take that back I'll take that back as your representative to the MPO and um, and we'll be able to put our our information on the record to to basically combat whatever whatever someone else may have uh, say differently so um, I have no other business uh, I appreciate everyone is there a um, motion to adjourn Can I just say something yes, mayor I was just sitting here thinking I know everyone's tired I am also just 60 seconds um, it's just a real pleasure to work with this council that's so diverse with varying interests and skill sets and as I sat here and listened to the reports tonight there was no fluff but very substantive and I like the forward thinking that's happening on this dais and I just commend you on the work that you're doing and it's a pleasure to work with all of you well I'm going to follow up that because I will say this that I've had more people come up to me as the new mayor and and have said how much uh, they are impressed with this council and how much they do believe that this council is going to make a difference because you you each one of us individually are really looking forward which is exactly what you said and it's and it's um the, the community is excited and, and and i'm excited and i appreciate your comments and i know i know the rest of the council do as well so was there a motion to adjourn is there a second all in favor thank you everyone good night <laughs>